Tiger Beetle Sessions, Tuesday, 1st of February, 2022, uh, session 15. Hey, Isaac, what's up? Hey, Aaron. Um, last session, we spent most of our time working on an optimization for our signature array where we amortize the, M the mem copies during insert batch inserts and removes to make things a lot faster, hopefully. Potentially, like, cutting our mem copies for batch inserts by, like, a factor of 10 or more, um, which will be very useful for our use case because we always do batch inserts, essentially. We always insert, like, 20 or up to 20 tables at once, and so this will make things a lot quicker for that. Um, yeah, and here we just have like some example cases of what we want to happen when we insert um, some new data, which are the Ys here, um, into a pre-existing node that needs to get split. We've already got the case handle where the node doesn't need to be split here, which is pretty trivial. And there, these are the cases where the node needs to be split, and we need to then we need to then um, copy the old data from the node where node we were inserting into into the new node and also copy the data we're inserting into the both nodes potentially and also maybe we copy the old data into the same node to make space it's there's a lot of edge cases different cases here that we need to deal with um, yeah. yeah i was thinking uh this morning or last night that the the i think up until now i thought of it as the the batch insert is setting in, inserting like 10 10 table info, 64 bytes, a kilobyte roughly, and removing a kilobyte. Uh, and then what I realized is that we do optimize that now, but even more so the if the node size is 64 kilobytes or 32 kilobytes, if we're inserting at the beginning, we're copying those 32 or 64 oh, yeah. kilobytes again and again and again. Mm -hmm. uh, so Yeah, that's what yeah. I was saying. Like the, yeah. This ammo, the, the, with larger node sizes, this is a very critical optimization, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it saves. Batch inserts. Exactly. So it's just for one update, saves t like one meg of mem copy. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. I also think we want to like really try and enumerate all the cases exhaustively here and then come back to the code. Um, that's what I was kind of like thinking on last night. It's like how to do this exhaustively. Um, I think I've m maybe got a way to do it. Let's just go to scratch thing for now. Uh, do you, uh, can you pull up your, your screen share, Isaac? Oh, I haven't even pulled it up yet. Yeah, we've Thanks. got a pretty cool view at the moment where it's just two, um, the two of us chatting full screen, whereas usually we're pretty small on the side, but now... Um, <laughs> So it's been a while since we've had a like a discussion view like this. <laughs> cool. I'll, cool. I'll pull that up full screen. There we go. Um, yeah, so I think there's like, hmm, I also want to go to the whiteboard, to be honest. Just to kind of get this sketched out, because let's try a whiteboard maybe. Um, Even try this one that Barnum Mayor had recommended us yesterday. We didn't actually get to try. Yeah. Um, well, it does look a little bit more complex, but also probably better. Um, can you see this all right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I really just want like a rectangle, but yeah. Hmm. That works, I guess. Okay, that's, that's good. So, let's make some rectangles. Um, this is like node one, so guess, let's say. That's then our new node. About that size. And so we need to figure out like, all the ways that our data can be divided between these two things. Um, so let's maybe like use the old data as purple again. And so um, 
So that we could have we could have leave data here. So that's like one place we could have data. Um, and the the question we're only considering the case where the old data plus the new data is greater than the size of one node. Um, it can also be we can also like they can also add up to almost the size of two full nodes. Yeah. Um, this rectangle fluff is much nicer than the older one. I like this one. Yeah. Um, Very nice textures coming through. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like a, it seems like it's a little bit fuzzy on the edges. It was actually kind of nice. It's like yeah. Nice, like whiteboard style. Yeah. Um, cool. Oh, yeah, this, you can, this is a sloppiness slider. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So we got this. This is in the, the old data we de doesn't get copied. Um, I'm going to first like, do the case where we um, where we only need to copy old data inside the same node. Then we've got some more old data here that we end up with. And we have old data here. This is, this is one case we don't handle properly yet. Um, and then let's grab the new data. And this can be red, I guess. And that will go in here. That's case. That's one case. I'm kind of like select and copy these things. Yeah. Oops. There would be a redo on this one. Oh, oh yeah, yes. it is. Yeah. This is so much better. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. And so. So that's that's like option one, like the case one we haven't considered yet. I think this is helping. You like the diagram? Is this? Yeah, I think this is it great. Like it it more visual. It's quite nice that we can start off with the starting state and then just copy that and read and drag things around to yeah, show how it goes. Indeed. It's like they've um, a little bit differently, but yeah. So then we've got another case. So I'm trying to make make find the cases with the maximum numbers of different segments because then the other ones are just special cases of those, right? Mm. Like there would be also be the case where you don't have this block here because the new data goes to the end of here automatically, but that would be a special case of this of this one. So that wouldn't be a separate branch in our code. Um, what we'll have is like we'll have different variables for all these different lengths, but then some of them will be zero length. Yeah. Or zero size. Yeah. Um, so we have the new data, I guess. We want then this, this so this is the case where the the old data split. Okay, I think the, the only case that we've got you can have the split in three different places. So here's the case where then the new data is split. Um, in the middle, and then I think there's one more that we ha also have. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, or that's the wrong color. Um, let's put back back to red, and then we need a new one. That's going to be purple. So this is where the new data is could split, and there's like one more where we have the um, split on the first section of old data. Um. Um, we make this like longer and then a new one. Oh, and I think we, I think what we can actually have is, oops, I want to make a, just don't be purple. I think we can actually have something like this. Um, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that where we have again, purple at the end. Yeah. It's basically so I think like, these are the three. Yeah. It's like a sliding exactly. sc scale where red red can be somewhere, you know, between yep. the two nodes. And so the three different cases are where the where the splits are kind of. And so I think we may if we if we do this properly, we may be able to handle this all with the same code path. Yeah. If we like have, um. So yeah, I think we just kind of have to deal with these three different things. And so elements in A, a and elements B are it's already good. I think we we need to have two different halves for this one, um, for the the starting old data, and two different halves for the set for the ending old data. So for this situation, you'll have um, um, existing um, existing one a, and existing two a, and then existing two b. And existing one b is zero length. It's would be like between here, but it's not going to get used. And then here we've got elements um, one a and elements yeah. elements a and elements b is also zero length. Yeah. So here element or existing one a 
Okay, so existing 1B and elements B are both zero length here. Here you've got like existing um, 1A, 1B being zero length. Elements B is, is not, no longer zero length. And then existing 2A is zero length. Yeah, um, exactly. Well, here you've got existing 2A being non-zero length. Yeah. And you do the same thing here. Here you've got um, existing 1A is really long, then existing 1B is now non-zero. And then, so we can only have one of the, only, yeah, only one of them can be split. Yeah. That's what we can assert. Them. And then these are the only three cases, I'm pretty sure. Other, the other cases are all just special cases of these. Yeah, um, there's, there's one more case maybe just to visualize it. Um, but it could happen that um, existing is exactly um, existing is all in A and elements is all in B. They get added together and then the split happens in such a way that red is all on the right, purple all on the left. Okay, so that would be the case if the node is completely full and we insert at the end. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I think that's just a special case of yeah. like this one, I guess, kind of. Yeah. That it could, it it would actually be. I, I think it would be nice to draw it just so that we can see them all, even even if sure. they decompose into a subset. The it, there would be no purple on the right at all, just purple on the left, red on the right. Yeah. That's it. Where on the left would be like three count, and on the right would be two, or it could be three three. Depending, you know, like how it actually, works. we don't. I'm not sure if we. The only case we, this happen can happen is if we have a totally full node. I think. Oh no, this can happen in this case too, where we insert the same number of nodes of elements as we have here already. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and they add up to more than half. Exactly. So then we get like a balanced. When we balance it, we then end up with this and this. Yeah. And we can also end up the other way, I think, um, with all the pink on the left. That would also be that, that, so. This one's a special case of this one. I, I'm gonna do this. You know what? I'm gonna put this on the same row as this. Yeah. And there's, and there's, another... there's another one that's just special. Sorry. Yeah, there's another one where all the purple could end up on the right, and all yeah, the yeah, which red. Yeah, yeah. Special case of this one. Yeah. Um. There we can. Copy that, and then same thing essentially here. Yeah. It should be balanced actually, so I'm gonna make these bigger. And I think it's make them like a little bit smaller. It, I think we should actually put them all vertically stacked so that you can see. Um, then I can take a screenshot also. Okay. Well, I feel like these ones are not shouldn't be included in the like specification. Well, these these are the, these are just special cases of these these this yeah. one and this one. Yeah, but it's just nice to see what can happen. Like um, because they're kind of the you, one could get focused into thinking we've got little bits everywhere, but you can have the, these are just very simple, you know. Um, showing they they're just showing the two extremes. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to just quickly grab, uh, take a screenshot. Balance. Yeah. I can take a, like a high quality, higher quality screenshot on my end and send it to you if you like. Yeah, cool. It won't be like compressed through the video stream. Yeah. Um, here we go. Okay, awesome. Oh, could you uh, deselect that top? Um, there we go. Did you want? Oh more? yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, no worries. <laughs> awesome. Got it. Very nice. Cool. So yeah. So I think what we want to do in the code is really just kind of examine all these, all three of these cases at once, and then 
we'll have essentially six variables, two for each of these blocks. And in most cases, some of the, or well, will only allow one block to be split at once. And the other, the other two blocks must have one of their halves being zero. Um, we just have to calculate them correctly. I think we can do that. We've got all the info we need for sure. Yeah. Um, it really, we, the, prop, the tricky part here is just modeling it correctly that we don't lose our minds trying to do the math. Yeah. Um, and we don't forget any edge cases. Yeah. So What's well, nice is the right model you, for that. Yeah. If you take um, the, the, two, the two extreme cases at the bottom, if you take the first one and put it right on top, um, and the other one stays right at the bottom, then you can see that it's kind of a sliding scale moving from left to right. Sure, yeah. And you, then you can also see that we've handled all the all the cases. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, this one's still just a special case of this, and this one's a special case of this. Yeah. These yeah. two could be the same thing, really. Yeah. Because this is just like um, this thing ends up being zero length, and this thing ends up being zero length. Yeah. And, and you've got other cases where you have essentially no, nothing here. That's yeah. like another case you could have, of course. But we aren't really showing that yet. They're both just special cases of this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So, shall we jump in the code now? Yeah. Yeah, this is great. I kind of want to just like start over, but I'm not sure. I don't really want to throw away this all this code yet. Yeah. Um, but I do kind of want a fresh start, like with the, this new approach or new way of thinking about this. Hmm. It's going to be very similar to this one, I think, but It'll be a little bit different. So we need what we need is, a, is better names for um, this than what I just said. Because I think this elements A and elements B is good for these things. Um, and we have kind of existing um, or leading ex existing head and this existing tail and the existing head A, existing head B, existing tail A, existing tail B. Does that sound good? Yeah, head head and tail are good and. Then you've also got um... so here we've got, for example, head 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 A, um, head B, um, elements A or elements B, and then tail B. Yeah, Does that song. Yeah, so we we always here... gonna have. Let's see one two three one two three. Do we have a case where we show red being in three? No, that, that can't be. We like yeah. we've got we've got cases where you've got three blocks of purple, uh, but we couldn't right. obviously have red, three blocks red of red. Actually divided into two. Yeah. No. Yeah. And so we're actually going to have four variables for purple and two variables for red. Yeah. And we're always going to have all those variables. Is the plan. Yeah. But then only some of them will be allowed to be, we'll have to require that or assert that some are zero length in some cases. Yeah. Um, so the we'll only have allow one, one block to actually be split. We'll only have, yeah. Yeah. So, so we could, we although could we have do... got six variables, we'll actually have a maximum of four that are non zero. Yeah. We could do existing and elements as our, as our, Okay. As our first prefix, like our most weightiest prefix, then we can further <laughs> further qualify those as A or B, and then we can further qualify those as head or tail. I think we should go existing head A, not existing A head. Does that sound okay? Yeah, or, or we could do A existing head, A existing tail. A elements head. A. I like the I like the A band. Okay. Cool. I don't know. So, yeah, let's just. I think we can make this work out for all cases if we do it like this. So I'm not going to put this inside the if statement. So no, no. we have a constant. Um, this we thing. actually won't. We won't need a branch anymore. We will just have to do four no, different things. Yeah. 
We'll do some zero size mem copies probably. Yeah. Um, and let's say, we're just getting all them all written out first so we can see them all. Yeah. I think we should swap um, tail and head and A because then it's going to line up with elements A and also where the node that it's in is more of a qualifier than where in the node it is. Uh, so the existing elements in A at the head or in A at the tail. Okay. The, the reason I have it in this order is that's the order ends up in, in the resulting slice. Oh, no, no. Some of these will be zero length. That, that's fine. Uh, all good. I just think we should, where we say head and then A, we should flip it around and say existing A, head, existing B, head. So we've got the same order for elements A, elements B. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Um, you were talking about the, the part of, the, the first qualifier here is the part of the existing data that comes before elements. Yeah. And this could be split into nodes A and B, or could just or could just be all in node in node A. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm seeing the first division is splitting this into three different sections. Uh, um, and then with, and that I'm includes the you. head and the tail. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think maybe I haven't explained it well enough. So what I propose is just line two or four, in in two or four alone, without changing the ordering of the lines, just to say the swap the qualifiers around yeah that's what i'm saying we shouldn't do that because we have three groups here that's the most important part and then we have each divide each group into two so the first division is dividing the these three things these things into, into three separate groups yeah our existing head elements and existing tail and each group is, is further divided into two a, nodes a and b okay um, and, and don't you want to lay it out in order of left to right? That it is. <laughs> well, because now now we've got existing head in A node, hmm. which is all the way on the left. Yes. And then we've got B node, yep. which is in another node. But I think we should rather do it left to right, yeah. like in our diagram. But no, this is this is left to right, um, because if existing head B is non-zero size length then elements A must be zero length, and then you get elements B, and the elements existing tail A must also be zero length, and then you get tail B. Okay, um, cool, cool, then, then I'm with you. Yeah, this this is left to right. Okay. And we can, look, we can go back and look at the diagram too if you like, but um, yeah, this would be like the case where you have, it would be existing, existing head A, and you've got elements A, um, you've got no existing existing head B, right? Because yeah. that would only be in this case where you have existing head B is, is then this here. And then you get, you have no elements A then, and you have no um, tail A. Okay. Here you would have elements A and tail A, but no elements B or existing head B. Okay. Cool. This is this is left to right order. Okay. And then just one, one idea. Uh, we don't have to do it right away, but do you think we could make... Some of these variables are mutually exclusive, so they're kind of like unions. Right. So I don't know if we can use the type system to show that. That you. My can plan have... was to just do just to, to just have some asserts at the end. I think okay. the calculations are going to be tricky if we try and do that um, differently yeah. here. But okay. I could be wrong. I think we need to kind of see how the calculations work out to to produce these variables. Yeah. Uh, maybe we do end up changing our minds on that. Yeah. Um. I'm just in order from left to right, note that some may be the length. Okay. Okay. So existing head A, this is going to be the cursor dot relative index, I believe. Um, it's just that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, sure. This is the easy one. Um, this is gonna be. Do we want to make these slices or indexes? How do we, how do we use these down below? I think here they're actually indexes. They're, they're counts actually. Yeah. 
I think what we want here is actually slices, though, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, I think so, too. Because the counts are very easy to get from the slices. Then you've actually got the slices pointing to yeah. your source data already. Indeed, yeah. And so we can copy that. Yeah, so let's make, let me, like, um, let's, let's take, like, one of these examples um, and then, like, do the show the before and after this? Yeah. yeah. And so, this the before is then going to be. This without this part, and this is then here, and this is then here. Oh, this doesn't really fit. I guess I should make it smaller. Yeah. <laughs> This is the before, essentially, and then afterwards we'll have this. There's like I, I, I like having the lines here next. You can then see where you have to break it up on the yeah. start array, and yeah. so we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna copy from the first copy will be this copy that needs to happen first before we can do this copy. Yeah. Right. So we'll always do the copies from like from backwards to forwards. I think from the last item to the first item. Yeah. So the first copy will be this to this. And so what we what we'll need for this is, just, is the slice of where it is. That's all we need, and then this destination slice. Yeah. Um. And so the destination slice is the tricky. Maybe it's not tricky though, because we can add here. Here it's easy. Um. Here it's a little bit trickier. But here's also not bad, because what we do is we just add this length plus this length, like the length of this slice plus the length of this slice, and then we put it there. I like slices are good. Yeah, it's that. great. It's great. Yeah, uh, Isaac, if we stay there. So we want to we want to calculate yes. the existing head A, like or to calculate that slice. So if we go down to the bottom scenario, like bottom left, that's kind of what we want to calculate now, right? Existing head A. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's zero to relative index is what it is. Um, it, it isn't actually, uh, because relative index here is. Um, or the uh, minimum uh, relative index in half. Okay. This, this is the tricky part. Yeah. So, yeah. This is the case in where, see this, I'm not even sure, if, can this really happen? This seems like it wouldn't, these, this, these things don't fit in this thing currently. Um, or these need to be like a lot smaller, I think, to yeah. be, have it make fit to scale. I think it could um, happen. It, so, it definitely can. It's just like, yeah. I, these aren't really to scale right now is the only problem. Yeah. 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 If if we look at the bottom this one, is then a little bit smaller. Yeah. If we look at the this bottom, now, this now makes sense from from a scale perspective. Yeah. Um. So this is a case where we can't actually use relative index. So, in this case, relative index would be like here, um, where my mouse is right now. But we don't want to use that because we actually have we have to then push this stuff past the end. And so what we use is the minimum of um the first half or a a size or whatever a count um and relative index. relative index yeah yeah that's it you happy with that yeah it's quite tricky like the bottom case makes it look like you can use relative index because exactly that's uh, you have to look at the that's why it's really nice to have all three cases like written out here we can see like the tricky one yeah yeah it gets split yeah. And this is like the edge case then where A gets split. So we're, the edge case will always be when the, when the thing we're looking at is split. So that's what we should look at probably. Yeah. Um, cool. Cool. So this is going to be um, A pointer from zero to a min or minimum um, A half. And then we wanted to make this div seal. I guess we can do that in a minute. Yeah. Or just do that when we're done. It doesn't yeah. matter right now. Um, and then div index. That's that's A. Cool. Mm. And close the slice. I thought then B. I, I was thinking last night about the div seal. At the moment, we've got three things there. We've got flooring division. Then we've got taking the inverse to calculate the second half. And then the third yeah. thing we've got is that we swap the order so that we can avoid the div seal. So we've got like an interesting order. But if we use the div seal, then we only have two things going on and we've got them in the order that we yeah, yeah. And we show it more. You know. um, uh, 
It's still gonna be a pointer. This is the stuff we're copying from. Okay, and this is gonna be starting at existing head a dot length. And going on to um, the count in this node. That right? I think it it um, if we go back to the no, it isn't. It isn't Not at all. Yeah. Hold up. Okay. Um, shall, we, shall we go back to look, the? Let's look at here. This yeah. Is... So we've actually um, got this up to here. Here we've got a head A, we've got a head B, and we've got a tail B. Yeah. So let me let me let me do this. Let's let me, let me tell you what we're gonna do this. Um, oops, that's not at all what I wanted to do. I wanted to just copy this. Um, and it's basically done that all selected. Maybe I do. Okay. Yep. And then we're going to do another paste to get the before. And then we can copy these things back to where they belong. And so we're, we're going to have, we're going to start with this. And so now this is going to be the difference between, um, half and the relative index is what it's going to be. This this line here, where this, this little gap is where the relative index is. Ah, uh, cool. Um, so this, I guess this is the case where um, relative index um, is greater than half. That's where you hit this case. Um, and so that's then going to be... Um, Eight at length, and so up. It's just eight at length is already going to be the minimum of half and relative index. But we're just going to, just going to go to relative index again. Relative index. And that's not correct. This one always ends the relative index because um, elements always comes directly after B. Yeah. Or existing we, B. Can we take a look again at the diagram? Yeah. So in this case, we've got two lines here. Um, let's see, can I? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if there's like a label thing here. Anyhow, there's like a there's one here, and there's one here. Yeah. The first one is the, the first one half. Half, and the second one's the relative index. Yeah. And so, but. We don't. We also want this to be zero sized in, for example, um, this case, where relative index is here. So if relative index is less than half. This is like relative index is here, and then half is somewhere around here. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is what I was so wondering is, about is, yes yesterday, where relative index is shifting underneath the half. The halfway point. Yeah. The cut point. So this is the case we weren't handling yesterday, right? Where we yeah. have to have. Shifting inside the first node. Yeah. Or, yeah. I, I didn't understand Anyhow, it, we're... but I, I had a feeling there was something shifting underneath our branches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we saw that our assertions were failing. So we, we definitely knew that we something was going wrong. Yeah. But now, now we've got a much better understanding, I think, because we have now exhaustively enumerated all the cases, which is very yeah. much what I was thinking about. Like, what are all the cases last night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I realized we were missing some. Anyhow, next up is elements A. These, this is actually, now for these ones, actually, we only need to determine the length, and um, then we're just slicing into elements. So how do we determine whether elements get split or not? That's in this case, where elements need to get split. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be all elements B or all elements A. Um, and we actually, do you want to like do the other half of existing first? Actually, that probably yeah. depends on elements length. I just want Maybe to it qu doesn't. quickly just check something. Uh, I think it's good that we do the other bit of existing, but for existing yeah. head A, head B, uh, so we're going to do, uh, I just want to check the bounds of head B, where we're using head A's length. So head A's length is the minimum of half or relative index. So half is before relative index. So then that's fine, that slice. And I'm just wondering... I think we might have a bug because a half 
we, we're not factoring in the actual existing element count yet. Maybe we need to put that in too. Okay. Hmm. We, we might I'm not sure if we do or not, because we have that we know that we have we know that the total number of elements across existing elements and and the into elements we're inserting is greater than the node capacity. Um and half is going to be total over two. That's how we define it. So I think we're already ensuring that we're in bounds. If we're in the relative index, could be so that the, I guess the edge case here is where the relative index is um, like the out of like the one past the end. Yeah. Then we also don't include any either slice thing because you always stop slicing at this. I think we're we're always in bounds here. Um, yeah. And so remember okay. the half is defined based on the elements we have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's also not all the, hmm. So I think maybe you're right, because half includes the elements we're inserting as well. So if we have like two elements in the node and we're inserting a whole node worth of elements, let's examine that case. Yeah. Then half will definitely be out of bounds. Depending on how yeah. the, the div seal falls, we might have two existing yeah. elements in the first half and one new element in the first half. Yep. But so I, do we need another, I do think another... I do think cursor relative index does help us because that should only be able to be somewhere within existing range or right at the end of the range. So it does already take right, into yeah. account the count okay. of the range. But we could assert yep. that. Um, um, how do we want to assert that? Like uh, cursor relative index. We can just, just less than. It, yeah. Yeah. Less than or equal yeah. to okay, um, existing count. That way we're binding the two variables together and then we can yep. rely on the one. Um, that's also just really good to have document here before we do the stuff so we have it like in our minds. Yeah. Because um, it can be equal to as well. Um, yeah. Which I think we handled correctly here. Yeah. Which make sure the zero size slice works. Um, and so that'd be the case where relative index is zero, and then you get zero to zero here, and then you also get zero to zero again here. So that's fine. Cool. All right. Good catch. Nice. I, I it it okay, wasn't a bug. It was just nice to think through it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was really good to think through that. Um, so existing tail A is going to start at existing um, yeah is this existing head a dot length really um, so this is always gonna so we can we can add the asserts that some of these are zero and other ones are non-zero yeah um shortly to like cross check all this stuff so but this is the case what we're looking at now is um, this case here this one um, where the tail of A is split, and so this is where um, existing head B is zero length, and then existing tail B or tail A is still inside the A node. Existing yeah. tail B is also non-zero. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the, we have a drawdown over here already, actually. So it's not really to scale very well. Um, maybe it is. I guess it's not actually. Actually, seems pretty pretty well to scale. That's um, so. Great. This, yeah. this is going to start. This is going to start at the end of existing head A, and it's going to go up until what point? Um, see, actually, think we. I think we actually need elements to length here, because what we need, we want to actually go up until um, the sum of this length plus this length plus this length would be um, than half. Is that right? I'm not sure. We we trying to calculate the the uh, existing existing tail B. Is that right? Or tail? Yeah. Well, it's just an existing tail A and existing uh, tail B. Okay. And we so These first two. up tail A is first, right? Yeah. So if we look tail at tail A, the, is this is this block? 
Yeah. Okay, and we're trying to handle, uh, if we look at our cases on the left, we're handling case two. We're, yeah. Yeah. Because that's the place where it splits. This will have the most interesting properties yeah. for us right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think this depends on the element's length. But I'm not sure to calculate that yet, because that also depends on this, right? And so, um, well, we, we need to use that all three of these sum up, sum up to half in the lengths, and then, um, or maybe calculating tail B is actually easier in this case. Yeah. Um, but if, then also, then, yeah. If we look at this, just the one below, I find that one easier, to, that one, yeah. Uh, if we go up, um, yeah, there. If uh, Looking there, then I find that easier to see. Then the first cut point is relative index. Relative index in this case is less than half. Uh, it's less than a half. Um, yeah. Then, then we go... So what we yeah, are to calculate that we need to know a half minus elements head a minus elements length. Um, that gives you that. Yeah. Point. Indeed. And then so we need to then figure out how to calculate this length. And then we calculate this. Maybe we should yeah. go look at the elements first then. And try yeah. it like that. Yeah. Okay. And so that would be then in this case. I'm just going to copy this also out here. Yeah, because elements itself oh. could be split. So we don't know whether elements is in A yeah. or not. So yeah. maybe I'll just scroll down a little bit here. So we've got some space. Um, OK, and then I'm gonna delete the elements for now and just move that back to there. So this is what we start with. We also know the elements to the total elements length. Oh, hmm. We already know the total elements length from what we're inserting, and so we just kind of need to decide how it gets split. Yeah. Um. So maybe we maybe we can maybe maybe we can do that like that. Um. This this start index is going to be will it always be um like the length of this block plus the length of this element block, and then up until half. Um, yeah, yeah. You only have this block if if that those two things are less than half. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. Because if, if you look at case three on the left, if in case three... Um, yeah, that's relative, where this block plus element length is greater than half. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So relative index plus elements length is greater than a half. Well, yeah. Well, it's yeah. Are we, are we going to use? Cause we also need to handle this case though, where um, your relative index is. We, I think we should go based off the length of existing head. Um, Existing head A plus elements dot length. Oh, this might be out of bounds though, I feel like. Um, yeah. Yeah, this definitely could be out of bounds. Um, hmm, what's the best way to express this? I'm going to do the, out, the possibly out of bounds thing first, so we have it written out, and then this goes up until half. And so this is like minimum of half and this sum then, I think. Is that now right? I really need syntax highlighting for minimum. Why isn't this getting highlighted? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not even that one, it's um load default file type zig. Um we're gonna fix this real quick, sorry. No, cool. <laughs> go go for it, yeah. There we go. Nice. 
Okay, and I need to just reload this buffer then. Or I just need to reload the CAC. Segmented array. There we go. Okay, nice. now it's a little bit more readable. Yeah, beautiful. Um, <laughs> so, uh, can we take a look at the diagram again? I find it easier to see off that. Of course. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to make sure I've got this in my head. A pointer. We can even like pull them up um, right next to each other if you like. Uh, that yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that'll be so much better. We can just drag. Let me make this a little bit more even. Yeah. Um, and then maybe. Who can I hold mouse wheel or spacebar? Yeah. We're looking at kind of this case. It's not really useful here. See, the problem is the font size is pretty big, so my screen isn't quite big enough to fit yeah. both of these on here. Can Can you do um, 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 horizontal layout, Isaac? Uh, top and bottom instead yeah, of left and right. Because then we should be good. Um, I'm getting a tiny bit of feedback as well. Okay. There we go. So, horizontal yeah. layout it is. Yeah. Um, nice. Okay. What a, uh, by the way, Isaac, uh, what, what a great way to be working. Like we've got fantastic window layouts, pretty good weather in Cape Town. We've got some diagrams going, code. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm liking this, 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 this whiteboard app is so much better than the old one too. I like this yeah. one much more. Yeah. Thanks to it. Amanda. So are we happy with this? Does this seem right at all? I, I so in the case where existing head A plus elements is greater than half, we'll have a zero length slice. Um, that's the case, I think, for um, this diagram. Um, because here we'll have this plus elements of length will actually get you past half. Um, and then for, well, let's see, what else do, other cases do we have? Should have three here, yeah. And then there's also this one, and so that this is all, this is also man. I need to like bring this over a little bit more. Yeah, so there's here there's, there's three cases here. We're now um, we've so for this case, um, our um, existing head A will get you to here, and the half elements at length will get you over all the way to here. So that's more than half. So then we have a zero length slice here for existing tail A, which is good. And then for this case, we'll have Elements that length or a existing head A alone is already half, and plus elements that length is definitely more than half, so you don't get anything. But for this case, which we want to get something, we do get something. Yeah, that's correct now. I'm pretty sure. And the length is just takes you up to half, because um, we never yeah that's the that's the end of the. Yeah. That that one is good. Thing. And I so I still want to just. Uh, uh, like in my own head, yeah. com compile the minimum statement. So uh, we've got existing head A length. So I think what we're saying is, if existing is that length, yeah, yeah, if existing is only has one segment, then it's going to be the head segment. Then we won't have a tail. That's how we think. Yeah. It. And so if what we what we need to do is say we can we assert that either this one is zero or this one is zero. That's one of the asserts we're going to do in a minute. Actually, we can do those now if you like. I already yeah. know what those need to be. Those need to depend on what these values are. So we can assert yeah. um, existing head b um, dot length zero or existing tail a dot length. There's a few more of these we can do as well. Um, um, well, we want to assert like, exactly one of, so the other one, so this, this should be a assert for every one of these cases, I think. Um, so here is that, um, if, if existing head A is not equal to zero, then elements B and, or then tail, tail A and elements I'm saying this wrong. This is not even about this. So let's let this one. This, this assert we have here right and here out here is about this last case actually. Yeah. Um. 
head B is zero, then, or if tail A is non-zero, then elements A is zero and no, tail A is this case. I'm just confusing myself like crazy. Anyhow, tail A is this thing here. Yeah. 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 Existing tail A. Then head B is zero and elements B is zero. So, so let's do it like this then. We can do if existing tail a equals zero, assert head B is zero and tail B is zero. Yeah. Or elements. I mean. Then we'll have if existing, if elements um it's, it's kind of tricky to make sure we assert everything we can here um i think like we really want to assert it's like only one of these three slices can have a zero can have can be split yeah and so we, we should start off also with the simpler sets um the we, we basically we should say like no, no data should be lost so um the if we add up all the slices for existing it should exactly equal the data count okay yeah. existing Um, so I'm going to put the account first to make it a little bit more readable. Yeah. Read uh, accounts A. And we can wrap this somewhere around here, I think. Then we also want to have another assert that like does the total with also elements length. Or actually, we, maybe we don't need that because we already have totals based on counts and this. We could do like total equals plus then elements at length as well. Okay. A dot length plus elements. This one's a little bit redundant, but I think it's not bad to have. These are the interesting ones though. Um, yeah. There's some more. So if the tail A zero, then we're in There's some more we can is do as well, Isaac. Um, even That's even bef this, bef this. before we get to those, we can also do um, elements A length plus elements B length equals elements length. It's the, sure. the mirror of the other one. We should do it, do it above the total one because total one is kind of doing both of them. Yeah. And then there's another one we can do after that where we can assert on the pointers of the slices that they should be um, they shouldn't they should be disjoint. So um, can we do that one later? That one can get kind of nasty, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's not that helpful, I feel like, compared yeah. to these ones. Yeah. Um, well, we do we do need it too because it's it's all the stuff we expect. Like we don't yeah. expect that the um, yeah, yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah. It's just going to be yeah. a lot of pointer casting. I don't really want to think about going that mode right now. I want to stay no, high no, level. No. No, um, no. But let, let's just put it to do in so we don't forget. Um, sure. it, will, it will be nasty to write. I'm, I'm with you. Okay. So, element, this in TLA is this thing here. Yeah. Um, oh, interesting. You can double click to write, apparently. Um, then we exert, assert the existing head B is zero. That means that there's nothing, that this thing doesn't exist. The existing head B. 
and the element speed out length is zero, so this thing also doesn't exist, then cool. If we have that. So that's a good assert. I'm just wondering um, the, we have uh, if you take a look in that second case, on the right-hand side, it does look like we have existing head B on the right. Uh, one Which up. one? This one? No, uh, this? one up. One up, still there. That's existing head B. It's existing tail B. Okay. Existing head B would be this here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm not sure there's a better name. I think there's no better way to name these. It's just going to be confusing whatever we do. No, no, um, it's, it's, it's it, perfect, yeah. The key is being consistent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next one, I guess, would be if... This is actually, if it's not equal to zero. That's what we actually want, what you want to say. Yeah. And, and so it's... I think otherwise... If it's tail okay. a dot length. Uh, yeah, thank you. Here we go. Maybe greater than zero is the better way to phrase it. Or not equal to zero, I'm not sure. Um, Great, greater, greater than, than zero. zero. No. Okay, now let's try another one. Um, let's try like existing elements. So actually, I think what I want to start here, um, this is actually the case where existing ta tail A dot length, existing tail A can actually, can that occur anywhere else? This is the only case where it occurs in, in this case? Yeah. Um, it, it only yeah, happens, so only, yeah. It, yeah it, only, is. it only happens if there's no elements in B. Yep. Right, and so then let's try the let's, the opposite of that would be that there's no elements in A, so that's when existing um, head B is greater than z is greater than zero. It's the yeah. opposite of that in this case. And I think we need two asserts on the elements when, for the elements, um, or something like that. Um, yeah. So head B dot length is greater than zero. Then we can assert that's this case now. Um, we can assert that. Um, Elements A equals zero. Yeah. And existing head A dot length equals zero. So that's kind of the opposite of that assert. But over there, existing oh. head A does exist. Uh, it should be zero then. Did I mess up one of these asserts? I actually think the first assert, we can drop the or. So we can just make it that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I elements. forgot about that. Yeah. Cool. I've messed the, myself up here somehow though. Um, yeah, yeah, so so existing head B, uh, it helps me just to, to step through it verbally, like when I, I can understand it. The existing head B length is greater than zero. Uh, that's on over there. So there we've got it. Yep. That, that can only happen if, um, if, all the elements are yeah, in so this be tail. are in the B node. So elements A length is zero. And then yeah, and that's it, tail A. Because you can only have a tail A if you've got all the elements in A. Yeah. That's the only way you can get a tail A. I think what I want to assert here, I want to flip the order here to make this um, in the same order we declare them. So make put elements of a B first. Yeah. That's the easier one to grok. It, it kind of depends where where the elements are. Where the elements are determines whether you have a head or, or a tail. Yeah. But I think... And so I here we've got tail A, then elements B. Head B must be zero. Then we got head B, then tail A, and elements A must be zero. Yep. Yeah. This is we good should, so far. We should swap the elements A also to the left because you can only have existing tail A if you've got elements A before that. Uh, elements A come before existing tail A. Uh, I was trying to match the order here. Oh, you're right, yeah. Yeah. 
And then actually the first one was incorrect in the order. I just kind of messed it up. But uh, um, yeah, it's actually, I think it makes sense for these asserts to put elements on the left because it's the, it's the whether existing has a tail or a head in the respective modes, it all hinges off elements, what elements is doing. The, hmm. I was just trying to follow, I was just following this order blindly because I think this is the right order. Okay, cool. Um, in general, if you always match that, then we're always consistent. Okay. Um, okay, cool. That's kind of my reasoning. Yeah. We have head B here, we have elements A, and we have tail A. Here we start with tail A, we kind of go backwards here, which is kind of weird, but we have head B and elements B. Okay, those two make sense. Yeah. And the order of the top is now we're just doing like the the actual like the physical order left to right. Yeah. So now we need the case where we could um, add a, we could add a comment above those two asserts and say um, something to do like if you, you can only have tail A if all the elements are in A and you can only have a head B yeah. if all the elements are in B. Yeah. Um, sure. Well, I'm sorry. I'm still thinking about like, the next asserts we need to do. Yeah. Do you want to add comments after we're done with all the asserts? Yeah, um, maybe maybe the comment isn't necessary because we're kind of saying it in the asserts. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what the asserts say. If you, yeah, if you catch up on the variable names, so yeah. I think the next asserts are to assert. Um, hmm. Or do we have this the right way around? Should we instead be asserting like if these things are zero, then this must be grid? Yeah, I think that's that would be not, that would not pass. Okay, so let's do some search on element dot length. So if um, elements a dot length is greater than zero, um, that means that there are elements in the first half, um, or and elements b dot length greater than zero. Then we can assert um, existing head b dot length equals zero, and existing tail a dot length. That's an assert. It needs to be wrapped though. Nice. So that, that's um, which scenario are we doing there? That's this uh, scenario. Which one? Yeah. So if these are both greater than zero, that means the elements are split between the two things. And then we can assert that there's not that this thing doesn't exist. This would be um, this is head B, and yeah. this thing doesn't exist. This is tail A. Nice. That's very cool. I lo I love this um, idea of using slices like this to capture more information than just the counts. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy how this code is going to work out, I think. Mm. It'll be pretty branchless, too. Um, yeah. So uh, over there, uh, we've just got to put an S. The first, we've got exiting head B. So before oh, the yeah. T, S. So there we're saying if elements are split across nodes, then the existing head in B, there mustn't be any. Uh, and because that would mean that we are interpolating the existing elements into yeah. elements. Um, so, and then also existing tail A, there shouldn't be any because tail A can only exist if there are no elements in B, no existing elements in B. Sorry, no, no elements in B, yeah. That's correct.
I think we can also do the corollaries of, or is it called a corollary, corollary of, of our first two existing tail corollary? A Corollary? Is that how I said it? Yeah. Corollary. Yeah. Yeah. We can say if, if elements A length is zero, then we can also assert on If if there's no if if elements a length equals zero, then we can assert that existing head a length is zero. Um. Existing head. Are you sure? Sorry, existing tail a is zero. Oh yeah. So if there, right. if there are no elements in A, there can't be an existing tail in A. Yeah, that, that, that's just better than these asserts. That's just more powerful. We do we do both of the asserts. It covers this case as well, but also more cases. Yeah. We we basically taking our first two assertions and then working them both both directions. Yeah. elements b length is greater than zero that means that this um exists then existing head b that length this is this is the wrong way around isn't it yeah it should be tail a yeah you just need to switch these two um Yeah. So if there are elements in A, then they can't. Then we be assert that in, yeah, we can't B. have placed part of the first block of purple in B. That'd be this case here. This is this is the only place you get existing head B is in this case where you have the first block of purple like spanning over into B. Yeah. And so in that case, we can't have any elements in A. Yeah. Which we assert here. Yeah. This is actually the kind of like inverse of these asserts. Yeah, that's what, what I, that's what I was thinking. And we have already the inverse of this part here. Yeah. And these two are like nicely tied together. I think this, this, these are all I wanted to do, I think. I think there's no, nothing else we can really do that's, that's good here. Yeah. I think I want to go back to doing the math now. We're doing existing tail B, I guess. Um, which we is going could, to be... We could just do still a few more simple ones. Like, we don't expect that... Um, we can work out... I, I don't know, if we go up to the top quick. So far, we, we work out the count... Oh, oh sorry, a little bit lower. Um, we work out the existing count across both nodes, sum it up, check that it's what we expect. We work out the elements count across both nodes, work out what it's expect, what, what we expect. We work out the total across both nodes, but what we could still do is just say what we expect for node A. Um, so like A half and B half, sure, yeah. Yeah. So the slices yeah, that, that can fall into A shouldn't be greater than, they, they must exactly be A half. A half. Yeah. Being for B. Yeah. Oops. Oops, I messed this up. Sorry, I'm gonna stop doing fancy things. <laughs> no, keep yeah, keep yeah. keep practicing, Isaac. It's good. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I want to get these these three. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Cool. 
we yep. could we could That's a good move, one to add for sure cool we could move those two down after the total counts i don't know either yeah sure. maybe we can put them over there and se separate them from the first three Wait, do we even need total then i mean because we've already if we're asserting that these two we already assert that these two add up to total above so this maybe this really verbose one isn't needed Yeah, we. Uh, where do we do that assert? Uh, uh, okay. Right here. Maybe we don't do it. Yeah. Maybe well, then we we, we could do it down below, right next to that other one. In yeah, well, let's do that. Um, let's just do this and then say. Um, e e half. I thought you were going to write Beyonce there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. And we're going to do total first to match the other styles. Yeah. So we do here elements dot length last as well. Um, what? What we could do is. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Make it consistent between all these different asserts here. Yeah. Um, That's nice. I think if we do much more, we're going to start going in circles. So we should finish up this stuff first. Okay. Um, well, and so the existing tail B, we've now got existing tail A. So we were looking at now, mm, which case is this? Existing tail A is this case. Um, so existing tail B, well, the slice we're taking it from is just, this is just now the rest of the stuff in our starting array. So this is um, tail A was the end of tail A. This is, this is now tail, this is, this is, um, Head head A. Hmm. So it's just like everything left in the in the starting array. So this is, could be head A plus length plus head B plus length plus. Well, tail B is only non-zero. If if tail B. Hmm. We don't actually have a on that. If so, what if happens if. TLB can always be non-zero in every case, I think. There's no way to restrict that. This is kind of just like adding up all the... Whoops. If we add up all the... If we add up head A, head B, and tail A, we'll get the start index for this. Is that, do you agree with that? Um, yeah. Um, I think there's no like better special case than we can do that. And then this just goes up to A count. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That seems like pretty foolproof. We could we could add an assert that if um, existing head A equals A half, then there can't be an existing tail B. But that is kind of um, what we've got already in our. Sorry. Existing head A equals A half. Yeah. I mean the length equals A half. Then yeah, but there we, can't be already... existing field B. Why can't there be? Um, so if we look at our fifth case down at the bottom. This one here. Yeah. So if if all the existing elements are on the left then there can't be a head or a tail in B. But this doesn't say that all the existing elements are on the left. This just says the first half of them are on the left. You could have, this is this is also existing head A equal to A half. Uh, okay, of course. So we do, we do kind of already have it in our A half assertion where we say 
Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so that's okay. Yeah. Are you sure that this is... Oh. What, oh, what we could do... You know what? Yeah. Oh, this is this is just eight half, isn't it? And then you got length plus elements. Oh, this is this is an element. Never mind. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> Different things. Yeah, I think this is a nice way of basically just taking the remainder. Yeah, and that also gives yeah, make sure we don't lose data. Yeah. And then if we now like if we we won't we'll never lose data, we might go out of bounds if something goes wrong early in one of the earlier. Yeah. Um, calculations, but we'll never like lose data because of that, and we'll catch it here at the balance check then, which is perfect yeah. actually. Yeah, um, I think. What do you think, Isaac? Uh, maybe we should just put the existing tail A length before head B length, so we we have all the A stuff on the one side. A. Um. No, I disagree, because. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure. It's, it's we're, tricky. We're taking the count yeah. of head A, then we're taking a count from B, and then we're taking a count from A again. So yeah, we should so just the take... two cases are here. Yeah. Um, it's this case with these three purple blocks, and this case with these three purple blocks. The first one's always the same. It's always existing head A. Yeah. And this middle one can either be head B or tail A, depending on the how things work out. Yeah. Or they could or they could also both be zero length. And then we have yeah. got this third one, which is what we're calculating. Tail B. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't it's, really mind the order. I don't really care what the order is here. I think you're, I think tail A is a fine way to do it. Put tail A first. Yeah. I mean, if one of these is not zero, the other one's got to be zero, though, I Thanks. think. Exactly, yeah. I think yeah. we assert that down below. So, yeah. Um, I'm happy with that, though. This needs to be wrapped or something, unfortunately. Um, you know, we can also do this based on elements, though. Mm, no, I think this is the right way to do this. This is the safest way to do it. Yeah. I'll leave it like this. Let's not make it more complex than this, because this is pretty simple, actually. Yeah. And just um, wrap, wrap it. Uh, yeah. Um, where do we wrap it though? Like here? Yeah, can't do it there. Sorry. I do it like there. Yeah. Okay. Now elements A and B. So, how do we determine this? This can kind of be determined from the other ones, I feel like. Yeah. Actually, we've already. Yeah. And so elements A is just gonna be like the the length is gonna be like A half minus the other three the other things in A. Um and then elements B and then like that'll be the from from zero to that. Okay, we can do that. Equals elements um from zero to um, you know, we, we may have to change the order of these things for the calculation, um, because these things might be dependent on now tail A and tail yeah. B, the lengths yeah. of those. Yeah. Well, I'm going to write it out there, even regardless of the order first, though. And so this is going to be um, A half um, minus the things that go in A. So it's going to be existing head A and existing tail A. Yeah. Then we probably need to, like, could be zero though, so I'm gonna do saturating, I think. Um, Can we move the uh, diagram at the bottom just to show the left hand columns? Uh, there we go, great. Well, there's the, these are the three like very important ones. Yeah. 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 I'm going to postulate that that's correct. Um, I think there's there's another way to to do it, where basically we say uh, 
No, I think that is good. I don't Sorry, do you agree that we can have a do that we need saturating here? I think we shouldn't use use it. Um, what is our other option? Can it happen, first of all? Um, that would be with existing hedge at length. I don't think it can even happen. No, it, it um, can't. Because the, what what is in A can't exceed A half. So Of course, yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to also then get rid of these parentheses and just use minus here as well. Yeah, that's better. And then B is going to be the same thing, essentially. Well, it can be elements equals elements. Well, it really, it can be, um, it can just be elements A dot length dot dot. That's all B really needs to be. And then we'll have we have a search to check that it adds up to b hat to half and whatnot. Yeah. Hello. So I'm not too yeah. worried about that. Let's just check. Uh, um, b half is also equal to. Uh, sorry, elements b is also equal to b half minus existing head b minus existing tail b. Can we just check if we've got an exact assert on that? Sorry, b half is equal to. Uh, it, sorry, elements b length is equal to b half minus. Oh, so you just want to put this in exactly? Um, uh, no, I, well, I think I, we I, already I, have, we have b half equals we have this assert here. I think, so I think we're yeah. okay. Okay, good. That that was all. I just wanted to check that we had that assert. So then yeah. I think the way we're doing it is nice because then we're taking the remainder, which is safer. Yeah. Um, we're going to put it like this in this order then, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. So this thing is to depend on existing tail A. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this is um, not really correct, really. Um, I still think we should keep the nodes all lined up in the source with head and tail as the last qualifier suffix. Also because um, yeah, I think we should keep everything to do with A together. But just yeah, yeah just just so that you read, you don't you read a all in the same column, not a tail head. Okay, I guess it kind of depends. And then, then it's like more orienting it towards where we we send the things to instead of where we send come where you take them from. I guess that's the that's the, the change perspective you need for that. Yeah. So then you because like right now it's, it, they're they were sorted by like where you take them from. Um, now like, you could then switch that around to like where you're sending them to. Let's try yeah. that. I guess. Yeah. Um, we don't. We don't even have to change the. I, I'm not even actually thinking of changing the line order at all. I think the line order was good, um, just to change the column order of the variable names, so that we see um, existing a underscore head. Head should be the suffix because the node is more important. That's not the thing it's paired with though, though. Because then you, then it looks like you have existing A head and existing A tail, or like the pair, but that's not what it is really. No, um, but we, we, don't, we don't have to show it like that in the line order. Um, it's just that we want so that's, to... Uh, see, the line order, that's what the variable names seem to state. Yeah. Um, but really, so, the A and B are a pair of things for, that are part of existing head, not the other way around. You see, the head is really like the last qualifier, um, so it should be last um, because head head A I is is the right so. For example, if we take elements, we don't have elements head A or tail A because we only have A or B, no. which which node they go into. Uh, elements go goes into the two nodes, and that's it. So we don't further qualify elements. 
so existing should have the same thing where you've got existing in A and then, but then existing elements we do further qualify. So what, so what existing is, yeah, existing is divided kind of at two levels. At the first level, it's divided into head and tail, which is the stuff that goes on either side of elements. That's the first division I see. Yeah. Um, it's dividing which half of existing goes before elements and the resulting um, segmented array and which half of existing goes after elements. That's the head and tail division. Yeah. And then after we've decided that, then we need to decide where this whole um, existing head, then elements, then existing tail gets yeah. split into two nodes. Then exactly. you do the node division, the A and yeah, it, but just tr just try it out. I, I'm with you totally on that. Um, so I th I think it's this, it's going to make that clear. So if you go to like like two six and two seven, and just swap it around there, just say a head and a tail, then it's going to line up well with elements a. And it's the it's almost as if we had a struct for existing, and the struct has got two fields, head and tail. Existing a head, um, that sounds like it's the first thing in the a node coming from existing. And existing a tail sounds like it's the... Yeah, but that is what it is. Yeah. Um, and it's it's also following like our style elsewhere where we always put the qualifiers in order of, of, of how much they qualify. Um, I so think for... that that's the other right, that's the other way around though. Well, so it, 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 I think it reads better. It just lines up and, and it's, it's putting the, the greater qualifier first in the order. It, it, it's, it's basically like we had a struct for existing A where the struct has got two fields, head and tail. Uh, but the, whether existing is in A or B, that's the bigger divider. That's the bigger qualifier. So that's why it should be first. I'm saying it's the, the bigger divider is whether it's before or after elements. Yeah. That's the first thing I'm looking at here in, in order. Is that the first thing just, I, I do is say, is this part, do these things appear before or after elements in the resulting segmented array? Yeah. And then at, that's like the first criteria of where to place them. Um, is where you insert elements into existing. So that's why how I split existing into head and tail. Yeah. And then it's just the, the task of dividing these, this larger slice into the two arrays. Yeah. So I still it's, think head and tail are the first, are the more, or the primary qualifiers. It, yeah, but A is also a qualifier. And whether it's an A yeah, or B. But that's secondary to the ordering between the existing head, the elements, and the existing tail. Yeah, I I disagree. I think so. We we do have the like the convention where we, yeah yeah. It, it just lines up better, and it it re, uh, to me it looks clearer. Like to, this is how I see it. Like which which of existing going to the A node, which going to the B node, and then further qualified by what the existing elements that go into the A node does it go to the head or the tail of the A node? Uh, it's it seems really nice like how we've got it. Whereas at the moment, like this the lines two ten to two twelve, the B's are not lining up. So you don't see it as crisply. It's easier to pass the first. And and how I think of it is is let let's figure out which elements go into A or B and then further qualify do they go to the head or to the tail. Uh, and then we can use the line order to show the actual uh, but it, it just, it, I mean, we don't have to do it if you don't like it, but I think it looks nicer, looks mm -hmm. cleaner. Uh, I, I see the, the lining up, they, 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 I agree that they line up nicely, but yeah. I feel like that's not like the most important criteria for variable names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though it is a side well, benefit. It, it, it matches um, the physical order because the the existing elements that are in A are always going to be B before whatever is in B, whether it's head or tail. So the node is a bigger qualifier than whether it's at the head or tail of a node. Uh, so logically, it makes sense as well. Okay, I guess that is a good way to see it. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. about it more in like not 
I guess the way I'm thinking about it is not as directly connected to how they're laid out in the nodes, but rather like the abstract segmented array layout. Yeah. Um, which is yeah. useful, but maybe not as useful in this context. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm definitely thinking about it like as a, as a detached, like kind of more abstract thing, not kind of detached from what these node diagrams do. Yeah. Um, just kind of like how they are laid out in the segmented array. Yeah. And then dividing so that I, up. Yeah, it's fine. I, th I think we've got like A head comes before A tail, which comes before B head, which comes before B tail. And that's why I like the head and tail as the final suffix, because it's the, it's the, it matches the sort order. Um, it's the, if, okay. if, the, if, if, for that's example, a, that's another good point. That, that, yeah, that's that, what that I, maybe a uh, graphical sort order. That, I'm that's convinced been, now. Cool. That's maybe I've just been explaining it really badly, Isaac, but th that's how I've been seeing it in my head. Like if we were doing a sort on this, we would first sort by node. If the nodes are equal, yeah, then, we, then, then we would sort by head and then yeah. by tail. Uh, that, that's the that's way a really good argument. It. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I took so long. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. I, I just took long to explain it clearly. So thanks for helping me out. Uh, oh. Existent A tail. B head, existent A tail. B head, existent B tail. Um, I really just need to search for head A and replace that. Yeah. Yeah. A head, and then we also need then tail A. A tail, and then it's got to be B, tail B. Tail. Ooh. No, that's not good. I've just misspelled tail like 10 times. Wait, that's right. Yeah, I L. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? What am I missing? Just. It, it, what is that? Uh, there's like a famous classical piece. Is it? It's a tale of two something, or is it like the cathedral and the bazaar is essay? Or uh, am I getting stuff mixed hmm. up? Not sure. Okay, let me first check it out before I, I quit. <laughs> Um, and so actually what happens here now is elements A is between, um, like in, in the actual order in the array, elements A becomes between, like between these two things. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we can't do that because of the dependency here on yeah. these two. Yeah, so that's fine. It would be kind of neat if you could like enter a declarative scope inside this, but that doesn't really work. Yeah. Um, just for like this kind of thing. You guys have a declarative scope right now. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But what do you, what do you think? Like a ling are you you're also happy now? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happier, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then what about the ordering? Should we do it like... It's just a kind of different way of if having it structured now. I'm still like a little bit confused by it. Because um, <laughs> now like the splitting, I think it comes like slightly less here because really existing B head is related to existing A head here most directly. This, is, this comes exactly right after that in a split order. Um, so I think we should put these back next to each other. Okay. Because this is like the one that comes, it's like if we look at this 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 initial array, this is existing A head, existing B head, existing B tail. That's what yeah. how, how that works out. And, so, and these things are also directly related to each other and how the slices are calculated. This comes from existing A head at length. Yeah, that's cool. The same thing. The the line order is fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll go back to the line order we had. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, still feels a little bit weird to me because just for the slicing, I think it'll make more sense. Like when we start do the copies themselves, it'll make a lot of sense with these variable with this variable naming. Yeah. But um, yeah. 
Yeah. The you know the other line order you just tried out wasn't bad either. Like we worked it out this way. Um, I like this one better for working it out and like reading okay. through it. If you actually look at if you look at the variable names alone, it doesn't make as much sense. But if you look at the calculations, I think it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, cool. Is this is like the depends the order of, of things. So this one's dependent on this. Or this one's dependent on this one, and then this one's depending on um, this one as well. Um, well, it only, on, it, it only depends yeah. on that one. A tail only depends on a head. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, this one also is like a more direct dependent because so that's just the order they appear in the starting array. Okay. If, you like slice, if you consider like slicing up the existing array into things, this is the order the slices are in. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's that's a, a nicer way to do it. Yeah. And then cool. we have elements. I think we're, we're now done with our slicing. Do we actually get this all right somehow? Maybe? I'm, I'm sure we're going to have an out of bounds or something. Um, just because of some like edge case where we need to just add some like, extra logic to like make it the size of your length and not go out of bounds or something. We'd, I think we should just kind of do the copies. I, I think we're correct. Uh, and I, I don't think we have out of bounds because we are working purely in terms of the counts. We don't have any plus ones, minus ones going on. All right. That's my guess. Cool. Let's um, do the copies then, I guess. Mm. Can we delete this code? I yeah. could delete this old code now. Yeah. Um, actually, we can yeah, I think we just don't need it anymore. We can keep this stuff at the end. Yeah. This stuff's still good. But it this would be nice to, yeah. to bring our notation back in to capture, like, document our diagrams and, and show the those, you know, that spectrum. Oh, you how, mean this stuff? Yeah, yeah. But to do that oh, using yeah. our diagram and show how it moves across mm -hmm. nodes. Like with, like with this stuff now, though. <laughs> Yeah, and show it, show it going okay. from the from one extreme to the other, going all the way through. Yeah, I think I would just do these three diagrams. These are the three critical ones. Yeah. Um, but we should we should do the extreme as well, just so that um, people can see it. it I, I mean, I know that the three are critical. Uh, the, the middle three are what it's about, but it it helps me to see the whole. Yeah, we can just we can document those as special cases of one of the middle three. Yeah. I'm just gonna delete it for. I think. Um, yeah. Well, we'll copy like one example. So we have the right format if we forget it somehow. Yeah. Um, cool. Just like stick it up there somewhere, and then I'll yeah. delete this stuff. Yeah. It'll be pretty now sweet we if, do... it, if it runs first time, you know. <laughs> I still think we gotta have an out of bounds or something, like yeah. just like a, an out of bounds slice, but it's it, but it would be a a zero length slice, but it ends up being out of bounds, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, not like a logic bug, but it's more just like a, okay, we yeah. need to have a special case for this because they will do safety checks for us. But, yeah. You know, I'm I'm kind of thinking that Zig shouldn't should allow um, out of bounds slicing if your slice is zero length. I think that would clean up some of this stuff. Like if you have, if start and end are the same value, then it shouldn't give you a pan safety a panic no matter what this what the actual start um, index is. If you yeah. have start and end being the same end. Maybe that that would hide some bugs though, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um anyhow. maybe, maybe it might be I mean it's a good idea, but maybe maybe someone is actually intending to do a copy that is a zero length, but they still got their index wrong and they, and that, that's out of bounds. And then that maybe covers something where if it the slice wasn't zero length, now it's still going out of bounds, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so we've got to do the right order now. And so the first thing we want to copy is essentially um, the last thing in, in our in our actual order. So we got to copy this one over first, then we'll copy this one over, then we'll copy elements, then we'll copy this one. Yeah. Essentially. So it's B. So the last thing. B tail and then B head. B tail. Okay. Yep. Um, so it's just, well, we have slices already though, so it's just B yeah. tail, is it existing B tail? Yeah. Um, okay. and now where we place it is now a little bit tricky. It's now B, we're placing it in B pointer. Um, which will be then existing. We need to add up these two lengths. 
Yeah, exist, is yeah. it existing B head length plus elements B length? Yeah. B head dot length. Okay. And there's nothing else in B. This is the, this is the third thing in B, and so that's, yeah. that's, it all, that's all good. Yeah. All right. So now I feel like we should copy the second, the the next thing in B, elements B. Just go backwards from the from the resulting array. Yeah. Or, yep. Yeah, because we can already copy elements B into B, and so that's that's fine to do. So let's do that now. Elements B. And then we're gonna do existing B. And these copies can maybe can be on one line. These aren't too long. Yeah. Yeah, these can be like one line copies. Yeah. Now it's going now we're not elements B, but now it's existing B head. Man, this is gonna be so clean. Mm. We can just get rid of that. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Brilliant. And I think I'm I'm fine with not having the balance checks here because we've got so many assertions right here. That's asserting the same stuff they would be checking. Yeah. Um, and now we're copying into a pointer. Um. Now we're gonna be existing a head at length plus elements. A dot length. Um, we're copying here to here existing elements tail. Existing a tail. Yeah, th this naming does make more sense for the copies. Um, cool. And now it's just going to be existing a to length, and we copy elements a. And the last one we don't need to copy because it's already in the right spot. Yeah. Um, awesome, Isaac. Great. Like uh, these slices are fantastic. This is what I was kind of. I, I mean, I didn't have a. It was a murky picture, but when I was talking about virtual memory, uh, like just moving stuff around, yeah. uh, like the slices um, are perfect for this. And it's it's a much. Yeah. It's it carries far more data than using counts because now we're actually talking about mm, memory. Yeah. Like, pieces of memory and we're just adjusting them. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so now we've like we basically this is this this is just the it's just building the right abstraction for this, right? That's what that's what we need to do. We just need to find the right abstraction for the, our data. Yeah. We're splitting it up into these six different segments of the input data. Yeah. And then it's trivial to put those six segments in the right spot with five yeah. copies. Yeah. And two of these will always be zero length. So there'll only yeah. be three copies actually that actually happen. Yeah. Um, awesome. So existing B head goes into B pointer. We don't actually need an assertion there because the assertion would basically be it goes into B pointer up to existing B head length because that's where elements B starts. Exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't. Yeah, uh, so that's what I was saying. Like we can't really make these any safer by adding more bounds here because we already have yeah. all the development assertions here, and yeah. we won't go out of bounds. So yeah. And and There's the B, really to do. the B pointer slice itself yeah. is already bounded by the node capacity, so we will get a exactly yeah a, yeah. I want to just like put the five copies together like this. Yeah. Um, I think I think we should do it separate because they are the different nodes, and also because yeah. I think we need to use copy backwards when we within a. Um. Oh, you're probably right. Yeah. Um, only for this one. I'm not even yeah. sure if we need to, to be honest. Um, so what's the case? This is for copying existing a tail within a. So this is this this case. Yeah. So where the question is, is, is if the destination can overlap with the source. Um, and so I think we can play with these lengths to make that overlap for sure. So I think you're right. We need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely seems like this could overlap pretty easily. So if we just make make elements smaller, yeah, then this would probably almost certainly overlap. If like elements is just like one element, yeah, you end up having like something like this. Yeah, 
I think you, you make it like this would also be end up being smaller, but you end up, I think you end up with a definitely with a way to have that overlap. Yeah. Cool. Good catch. Nice. It's nice that we make that the odd one out rather than making them all copy backwards because that way Indeed. You, can, you can see uh, that, that yeah. that's the one that's exactly important. these ones. There's no overwriting. Like the B point B pointer is empty to start with. Yeah. And this one. Yeah, it's now overwriting the, the stuff we just cop we just copied out, and so that's also fine. Yeah. And also copy forwards is faster, I think. Um, yeah. Is um, can we take a look at memzig quick? Um, like, would we get an assertion failure if the if the slices are if they overlap? Um. Sorry. So, because we set runtime safety false, um, we wouldn't. Uh, currently, we wouldn't. But there's a to do to remove this, and instead make the compiler smarter. Um, okay. I think. Well, yeah. There's also an accepted proposal, I think, to make the, just the mem copy just a built-in, um, and then there would be safety checks for this. But also, you wouldn't have any pessimization. Yeah. Nice. Like zero, zero cost abstraction. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is really, really trying hard to make zero, truly zero cost abstractions. Yeah. Um, that's like yeah. a lot of what Zig is. Yeah. It's like the standard library, for example. Like Andrew's approach to the to the file system abstractions is basically to read the S trace and see what syscalls are unnecessary, and then change the code to fix that, to make it yeah. the, the minimal syscall method possible. That's um, awesome, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, like, the, the Rust had, like, a CVE recently where they messed up their remove or delete directory thing. So there's some race conditions with symlinks and whatnot. Um, I don't know if you caught that, but no, 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 there's, like, the removed or all in the Rust standard library. Um, had some time of check, time of use things with symlinks. And yeah. There's a CV then for SUID applications, but Zig's Zig's got that right, and also just uses fewer syscalls and is way simpler. Yeah. Like if you compare the lines of code, it's like like a, a fairly complex like like 150 line function or so in Zig, and Rust is like 400 lines of who knows what. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's also different for every platform. It's the same for all platforms. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. The um... It's funny, like all the security stuff almost always comes down to time of check, time of use, or time. It, it, you can substitute, just change the C and the U to, to calculation or update, or and it, it's always it's basically yeah. a gap. Like there's some kind of gap between things. Like what yeah. should be happening? And there's also just like the, the they also just made like the classic Unix mistake of like, at seeing if you can checking if you can do something first, and then before instead of just trying to do it and handling failure. Yeah, and that was the that was one of the the bugs they had. Yeah, yeah. where they just like yeah. instead of just trying to delete something as a symlink or as a file, they checked if it's a file or a directory, and then if they did something different, if, depending on that, instead yeah. of just trying to delete, delete it as a file, and then if it doesn't work, then try and delete it as a directory. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, and symlinks symlinks also dangerous. Like there's um, with a lot of like zip decoders, they they can handle directory traversals where someone is trying to they, they craft a malicious zip file and the order in which the zip file gets unpacked because it's using relative paths internally you can actually escape sandboxes and get outside hmm. um, like that it's called a directory traversal so that a lot of them are pretty good for directory traversals but but then there's ways that you can include some links as well to, to still do, like then it's called a symlink yeah. traversal. And then there's even ways where you can do like a directed acyclic graph. So a very simple decoder, it's gonna check for symlink traversals and directed traversals, but it actually has to check by constructing a whole graph as well, because the attacker can still yeah. use that, like just to show you like it's- Crazy. So it, when there's symlink, and symlinks symlinks are involved, definitely are not the nicest thing to have. I kind of don't like them sometimes, but yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause they exist. You can't put them back in a box. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
It's also cool. the other thing was that the Ziggs version is not recursive, so it uses like constant memory, while the Rust okay. version is recursive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's so cool. I'm wondering, like, if Andrew then, if he's looking at the S traces, if I O Euring, I'm pretty sure he's going to be liking that because then the S trace is just empty. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing much to, to change there. Yeah. The, you can still then, I guess then it's harder because like, with, with the analogy there would be just like sending fewer copy or sending fewer read or copy or open operations to IOU ring. We need an IOU ring trace command. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's still like reducing the number of syscalls always is better. For sure. And, but and, yeah, I mean, this is, this is, the S trace is just a simple way to kind of just see what your code's actually doing and yeah. make it do less when you can do less. And so the same principle applies to with the IRU ring and just like submitting fewer operations. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can also, with the very first version of Tiger Beetle, I used to run it through S trace to see even that we were minimizing the number of IRU ring intercalls. Depending on where you, how you order the event loop, you might have two, you might have an extra enter which you can just avoid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right, so we test this. Yeah. Um, and then add more asserts. If it, it, it might just fail, we'll, you don't know. Yeah. Um, What's your bet? You think we're gonna pass? I think it's gonna fail on some out of bounds. Ah. Uh, okay. I was. I thought we yeah, would pass. This is going to be annoying to debug, isn't it? I think we just screwed something up. Mm. Um. <laughs> I think it's probably our first special branch that we've got. This one, you mean? Mm. I'm pretty sure that that could. I don't know. That could be right. Um, do you want to like dump the state to see what it looks like? Yeah. We have got pretty big numbers here. Um, I don't know how long the actual thing is. Was test zero out of three seems to. Hmm. Does zero out of three fail too? No, oh, why is it even doing three tests? It's just showing me one test here. Um, well, we don't even know how far we got in here, really. Yeah. Um, we could disable like a lot of those and just do a very small test. So we fail that one as well. Mm -hmm. Well, so then it won't be too, uh, too bad to be debug. We can make this even smaller, perhaps. Or I'll, I'll leave that 16, just make this smaller. Yeah. Like um, 64. Make sure we're still failing it. Yep. Okay, now it's time to debug, um, I think. Yep. So let's print off our arrays and verify. Yeah. So we got uh, we already have our log thing, right? Can yeah. I uh, in verify which is the actual test that fails? Um, it's the expect for the first expect equal in eight seventy nine. For yeah, this one after an insert. You know, we could just just messed up our. Well, let's, let's, I'm gonna go check to make sure we, our consistency is still correct. Like, are we making? Um, where are we at? Oh, we haven't done remove yet, but maybe we don't need to. Um, yeah, we, should we shouldn't need to to verify right. insert. Um, is this stuff correct? Do we it's mess this stuff up somehow? I thought we um, could take take a look at that, like our metadata updates and our special branch up top, and just check maybe we'll find it quickly like that, and we could review it anyway, you know. Uh, yeah. So the metadata updates these these seem right. I mean that's pretty trivial. That index is a. 
Yeah, that's it, yep. Um, no, that seems right. We didn't change anything related to that this stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, okay, I think I know. Okay, well, we no, we do, we do set the indexes for B. I thought maybe we're just incrementing, yep. but we do set it. And then we, but maybe we double count. So because we say for B plus, oh, okay, we go B plus one. So we don't, yep. we don't touch Bs again. We only no, touch stuff that's I'm pretty sure that's B. right. Yeah. And can we just check our special branch up top? The, so we do from relative index onwards. Okay, I think that's where the bug is because we we're copying. So this can happen. Um, we've got a node uh, where you've got existing head, you've got elements, and you've got existing tail. We assume that what what we're trying to do here. Our first thing is we're copying the existing stuff, but we're actually under copying it because we've got the we're bounding it by elements length. And that shouldn't be the case. We should actually oh. be, copy, be copying everything after the relative index up until the, the actual existing count, not the elements count. That's yeah, that it. doesn't make sense. Why are we doing this? <laughs> we, were, we were trying to be safe. Uh, and, yeah, and we ended up being wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And then the second it needs one... to go to count, actually. Yeah, exactly. Um, Um, node. We may clean this up. Uh, well, can we unify this with the other case? I think not too easily. I was wondering if we could, but maybe I it's wonder. the it's the empty node I think, thing I that we we can't because we already have we have like the A and B thing. I think yeah. if we no we have the insert empty node. We have to like yeah. Let's just it's there. It's just a special case. It's not very much. Yeah. Like this other one. How about this? This is now. Now it is correct, but this yeah. is also just, I'm gonna get rid of this. This seems like it's just error prone. It doesn't help us at all. Yeah, uh, Isaac, can I just quickly? I think I I've got a call. Just I'll be a second. To all right. See you now. Go for it. And uh, we're still getting the failure. Thanks. I thought I had a delivery. Um, we're still, it. You still got the failure. Um, unfortunately. Okay. So I was just going to add some blocking infrastructure to give us something to debug more easily. Um, okay. And so the first thing to do is print the um, reference. Reference. Um, we're going to point all the items in the reference. It's kind of like four reference to items. Okay, I'll go with the reference, and then we can print a new line, and then do the actual expect, or actual, or just gonna be expect. And then we'll need to do the iterator. Whoops. And then while, get done next. I um yeah, just we need to do i dot star I guess debug dot print it's 
it's not really super great style, but I think it's good enough. Oh, that was cool. So throw a new line in here. Whoops. Okay. Um, did I not write that? What happened? Or log is at the false, that's why. Yeah. Um. It's up top there, yeah. I thought we could also see in our run function, we could set our number of iterations to one, because maybe, okay, uh, it looks like we don't trigger it right away anyway, so. Yeah. Our node size, well, how many elements per node do we have? Expect is this and actual is this. Looks like we had just like, that's where we just like screw up one of these numbers. The other ones are all right. Yeah. Where does this come from? Well, it's the, it was what used to be there. I think we, we have an off by one somewhere. Oh, it's this, it's, well, yeah, so we definitely have to have an off by one, because this, this is supposed to get overwritten by this thing, which I assume is what we, what we just inserted. We just inserted, like, two things. Um, yeah. Or what have we inserted? We've inserted these two, and we've written this one, but we didn't write this one, so we've gone off by one somewhere. Um, Should we go back up to, uh, I'm sure this is in our... In our new... Is it where we calculate existing existing head? Um, oh no. It'd be helpful to see like the nodes in the um, debug output, but maybe we don't need that yet. Um, so, do we have an off by one here, just first of all? I don't think so. The symbol seems pretty, pretty correct. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we've gotten off by one on this, like vi that's visible now. Um, yeah. You got um, to take a five minute break there. We'll be back. Yeah. Good. Good idea. Yeah. Good catch minute. you now. Awesome.
Hey Isaac, we back. Hey. Yeah. yeah, so should we just look for the thing first or should we add more debugging infrastructure to like try and pinpoint where it is? Um yeah, maybe we should show um the node when we debug. And yeah. we should also then debug also the actual off, insert up. Just dump these these six things. Um, yeah, when we when we do the well. actual insert, see which nodes we're touching and where. Yeah. Then we can also just dump these numbers too, though, for these slices. But yeah, let's go back it, down to it, the. It, um, it might even be enough just to say we're doing an insert and we're doing it at this node at this relative index. And then if okay. we're pr printing out the nodes in that output, then together we should be able to see. Should we just first start by dumping the stuff in our remove elements instead of dumping the nodes here? Room, or insert. Yeah. Maybe we should just dump the stuff here first and then just look at it. Um, so. Okay. Um, do you like um, a tail? We'll do this in this order. Or, hmm. I think I'm going to do it the order we create them. Um, B, uh, mess this up, F and I, head, <laughs> tail, there we go. Cool. And then, okay, now we need a good way to turn slices into indexes. I kind of want to just make me a helper for that. Um, we want to actually print out the indexes, not the um, pointers. Yeah. So, you just do pointer math on every one of these um, things to print. Do it like that. Um, hmm. What we could do too is we could add our assertions on. So, what's interesting is all our assertions are passing. And we're not catching the bug. Yeah. So we definitely are missing an assertion. Um, mm. We could we could assert on our just to add asserts on you know that to do and solve that because maybe that'll catch it. Uh, maybe yeah. Sure, let's do that. That's probably will catch it actually. Yeah. Um, and I thought we I think can, I want to have a. We, we can do it incrementally, oh, yeah. so we... Pointers in the in, there are slices in the indexes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it might even be that we don't need to debug print. Uh, and we do need to... Yeah, I'll just leave that, that for now, then. Yeah. We can come back to that after we do these asserts. Cool. Um, I thought we could do it incrementally uh, as individual asserts that we gain information on where we're getting the failure as well. Uh, so okay. we can say, um, like we expect that element A pointer um, should be if well, okay, we uh, okay. So I guess we need to do the pointers all in terms of the same thing. So existing a tail pointer should be equal to existing a head pointer plus its length plus, I don't know, what are you thinking? Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I wasn't really sure what asserts we were going to do in the pointers, to be honest. I guess just yeah. 
kind of assert that they're in the right order or something. Um, that that's it, and we we can only assert existing with respect to existing pointers, leaving a gap for elements a length. Yep. So just so, we're basically so just, just asserting yeah. that there's no overlap across existing slices and no overlap across element slices. Yeah. Okay. That that's a good that's a good way to think about it. Yeah. That's yeah. probably what our problem is is that there we have overlap between the slices. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a head that pointer. We need a pointer to end it. To end. Um, we can also bind that one to the start of our A pointer. It, we expect that existing A head pointer should be yeah, equal yeah. to, uh, yeah. We don't even need that pointer in for that. We can just assert that. Yeah. Um, pointer equals um, A pointer. That's pretty easy. Um, yeah. We're going to int um, existing. Um, it's going to be existing a tail. And then this should be then less than or equal to. Well, it can also be equal to if, well, it should be less than or the or it doesn't tell the length is zero. That's the case where it's equal. Um, is it not um, plus elements length equals pointed to int? Uh, so yeah, a, we can do, well, a hit pointed. We need to do plus elements, elements length, length, and we then divide by the size of t. Okay. Um, yeah. A head pointer plus existing a head head dot length times or divided by or give exact, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There's times. This this is just like times size of t if we get like that. Okay. Size of t. Equals that. That should work out. Yeah, that that works out. We can do the same thing, I guess, for all of them now. Um, yeah. Now this existing a tail to existing b head. A tail. B head. And then this is now. B head to B tail. B tail and then B tail to what? So can't really do any more. Yeah. Um, we can do um, also then elements that elements B pointer. Let's just see if this fails is. first. Okay. I mean, Test. This doesn't compile. It's the bias. No, it doesn't yeah. compile. Yeah. Yeah. Look at hey. that. Here's our assertion failure. Awesome. <laughs> look at that. Nice so call. Perfect. Existing a head plus existing a head dot length times size of t is not equal to existing a tail. That pointer. And is that assertion correct? Like, should it always pass? Let's look at our things. So existing a head and existing a tail. So existing a head is this. Existing a tail should be this. Yeah, so these should be these should be lining up. Yeah. A head, existing a tail is minimum of oh yeah, this that's the problem. <laughs> This element cell length is in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a problem. 
Why is that even here? Cool. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Index uh, bounds. Okay. I need to examine this a bit more closely than just seeing if it would work if I deleted that. Um, existing A tail. The length is based on elements.length, I believe. So this is what we had before. Um, I think it's so got length to only needs to be with... by... there needs to be a minus elements at length here. We need, but no. not if. <sighs> no, not always though, because we don't want to go out of bounds. If if the first thing is a half, then we don't want to do this minus elements that length. Shall we draw use our notation above here just to draw what we need to work this one out, like directly um, above the cal calculation? I'm still like not quite clear in my head like what this should be, so I was trying to look at these diagrams first. Yeah. Um, so right now we're saying it's the minimum of a half and existing a head dot length. That's the start index. That makes sense. I think the start is correct now. It's the minimum of the existing a tail. So the a half thing is really just to make it it's so we... Um, it, it, we can also look at it on the left, the second case from the top, that's that's a tail there. Is that what we're doing right now? Yeah, it is, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, so it's half. I think we were looking at this diagram instead of this one, probably. Mm. I think where we... That's, the, what that's we where the problem to, was. Yeah, we kind of need to know, are elements gonna be in A? Um, are they only going to be in A or not? And that also depends on relative index with with relation to half, A half. So I think what we've got here is we've got A half going, but we're not factoring in where relative index is. We're, we're, that comes from this, come from existing head A dot length. Um, this is the okay. minimum of a half and relative index. Um, so it doesn't make any. It's just, I think yeah. what we had here is the length or something. Um, let me undo, undo, go back a little bit. Um, so here, a half um, existing a head dot length plus. This is the length of the slice, I think. This is, I think this is the correct length for like end index. It 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 depends. The start so index. You see, we we bringing is, the whole of elements length in. It actually depends on whether elements is entirely in A or not. If if elements the element is, entirely is not entirely in, in A, in a it is like zero. Yeah. And so that means we use the a half branch. Um, I think the this. You think you just want to so start if, directly at existing if, head if, a dot length. Okay. I think this is correct now. And then, the uh, other thing we had before was actually the length of this. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that I mean that definitely has to be the case because we can't. We, I mean, we have to start, yeah, a tail has right. to start yeah. at the end of a head, like that's for sure. Right, yeah, like. <laughs> that just makes sense. Yeah. And then, and then here we go up and kill either a half, which could be the end of a head exactly, 
or we go up to um, existing a head length plus elements dot link. You see, this thing, this seems wrong still. Mm. Um, so, like, what if what, what we what we really want to put in there is existing a head length plus elements a length. Is that are you sure? I think yeah. I think bringing elements into this is going to be wrong because um, this is only will be greater than zero length if elements are all in the first node. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's the trick. So if uh, if um, relative index plus elements length is less than or equal to a half, then we will have a tail. Otherwise, we relative won't have a tail. Index. We could do it that way. What's an um, length is less than or equal to a half. Yeah, then we'll have a tail. Otherwise, we won't. So relative index, um, if we go there second from the top on the left, um, you can see that's relative index plus elements length is less than or equal to a half. Then we're in that case where we will have an existing tail. Yeah. A. So yeah. We're the minimum with the a half and this is correct then. I mean, this could just be relative index directly though, instead of using um, this. Okay, let's try that yeah. maybe, to see if that works. There we got further. Um, okay, cool. Is this thing V tail equals A head at length plus A tail at length plus B head at length. So now this could be potentially out of bounds, I think, is the problem. Yeah, that's annoying. Is if, if these, if, um, if the node A is totally full, yeah. I think we could special case this and say, like, if array that node. counts. A equals node capacity, um, then it's just a zero length slice. Um, yeah, pulse that. Uh, Isaac, I've just got a delivery. I'll just be a second just to let them in. All right, okay. go for Thanks. it. Mm, I didn't fix it. Darn it. That's not right. Fuck. Why did I let him get so many of that? That's not just that is wrong. That's something that's not probably in here. Minus this block is gonna be half minus this is not one step away.
Thanks. Yeah, so I th and I decided this is wrong again. Um, so I started trying new things. Cool. Um, right now, my approach is to think about it like this, um, where we find the length of this block as half um, minus elements.length minus this length, um, which I have here, a half minus existing a head.length minus elements.length. Um, and then this is now a length of a slice, so it's not no longer an index. We have to do like the secondary slice from starting from zero, and this can underflow apparently um, if elements of length is yeah. So we need to have we just need to because we can just sat we could just saturate arithmetic here I think, um, and then we'll get oh, that's the wrong way around. I keep messing that up. Um, I think it's a form is a thing. Um, interesting. Someone needs to add tell teach sig format about these operators because it should be putting some spaces around the dots in that case. Yeah. But that's yeah, not exactly. that. Um, I know I know exactly how to fix that. It's just like I need to add these things to a switch and sig formats code. But yeah, <laughs> I need to remember <laughs> to do that. Let me just write that down real quick so I don't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good um, use for saturating arithmetic. Slice splitting. Okay, that's pretty easy to fix. It's just you gotta find that switch and add those two those new operators. Yeah. Um, I think this is gonna work now. So now what will happen is we'll get then a zero length slice when these things are zero. Let me just try this and see what happens. If you're cool with that. Mm. Okay. So now we now our pointer fails. Um, what's the, well, this is, is this the same thing? What is this? Is existing a tail pointer plus existing a tail length. No, we've moved on to the next pointer thing failing. <laughs> cool. We used to have a failure on the first pointer thing. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, sorry, Isaac, uh, the, I must just quickly sort out the delivery. Uh, no just worries. a second. Existing A tail pointer, existing A tail length, existing B head pointer. Is this existing B head? Is this one? Existing tail A pointer? Existing, existing tail A length? Existing B head. These names are messing me up. What is the existing B head? That is. That's this thing. It's existing existing B head. A head dot length up to cursor relative index. If that happens to be calculated, then we'll have. Hmm. I'm going to just have faulty assert here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is the, this one we're looking at now. Existing A tail pointer plus existing A tail length equals existing B head pointer. Um, yeah, that's, I think we've got a, they, they're mutually exclusive. If we have an A tail, yeah, exactly. we should check if we can have a B head. Can we have that if we go back to our diagrams? No, no, we can't. No, this is, this is the B head, this is an yeah, A tail. They, they're exclusive. So, so a tail must just, be equal to um, b tail pointer. That's the problem. If we a tail, a tail 
must be equal to plus plus a tail's length must be equal to existing b tail pointer. Because if there if there is an a tail, then there will be no b head. It will, there will be a b tail instead. B tail pointer plus a tail. Yeah. Okay. Is that right now. This, the next one is wrong as well. So a tail. Pointer if, plus or a tail is this, and b tail. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one is b head. Um, yeah. Which is this that then? One. Can we have that a b head right. and a, a b tail? If we go to our diagrams, is yes. a b head and b tail possible? Okay. Yep. Cool. Uh, yeah. Run it. Or maybe not, I guess. Maybe we just mess this up. We can also have our faulty calculation. B head yeah. pointer plus B head length equals B tail pointer. Um, so, head pointer. I think, Isaac, maybe we might have a bug on line 214 as well. Because we yeah. because we only take a half there, not cursor relative index. Um, perhaps. What's the case where this fails? Good question. E pointer existing E head dot length. So we're calculating, we're just looking at this case really. Mm. Here's that relative index is this, this thing. That's kind of like where we start from in the case this is working. Can we just remove the asserts and see if it passes real quick? Um, okay. I'm just curious. Yeah, good. Because that could like tell us if the asserts are faulty or something. Yeah, yeah. And now we got an out of bounds. Um, interesting. Isn't that like in our first our special? It's like here in the yeah. this case. Yeah. Because we can insert one past the end, can't we? Maybe are we. Hmm. I'm not sure how that could be happening. I think we probably messed up state somehow. Um. Huh. Looks like we, it seems like we got farther though. Like we, we we used to be screwing up this case, but now we fixed it. Yeah. Um. What is happening here though? Maybe we should print off relative index and see what it is. Um. Is it the zero that's out of bounds? Maybe maybe this is a zero length slice, and then you can't even index that at zero. Yeah, that could be it. Um, that could that could actually be it. Yeah. Um, so we could just say if if um. Uh, I've got it. I've got it. Uh, it's because we we t um if we remove the second slice. Uh, it'll, it won't fail. 
Will um, it be correct though? What, um, you see what we're doing now is we're saying we want to, oh, we want to slice. We, yeah, that's it. Yeah. We, we, what we were doing is we were slicing the yeah. remaining stuff and then trying to slice again by all of the stuff. That's why we were going out of bounds. We got pretty far. Yeah. We, we actually, we passed everything except for our expected padding thing. We didn't, we never only oh, yeah. doing one test case. Oh, cool. We're making progress. Hey, awesome. Yeah. Cross your fingers, Dirty Delvin. Yeah. Oh, look at yeah. it go. <laughs> it's always more fun when like spews out tons of data. <laughs> yeah, this is now this is now like watching Matrix Five, okay. Ma Matrix Five oh, or yeah. Six, where where the sequ where the sequel actually gets better than the trilogy, uh, not worse. <laughs> I don't know if you saw saw the new the new one that came out. I haven't seen it now. I, I only okay. watched Matrix One because I all I heard about the second ones was that they weren't worth watching. Um, uh, okay, okay. Ach, they they were okay, you know. But like, the, I mean, the new one was pretty interesting to watch. It, at times, it feels like you're watching a comedy. But um, yeah. <laughs> um, especially right, the ending. Make it stop you know? up so it runs faster. Um, yeah. Oh, it was still. I was it was still. It, it was. It was interesting to watch, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and some parts of it were cool. Uh, they, they, nice. they did. They did like. They did try it, like a, a, a you know, a, a sequel that could make sense. Also yeah. bad. Cool. Awesome. That was Congrats. pretty sweet. Yeah. I wish I need to fix that assert. Um, yeah. Cool. That means things are working. Yeah. That's, this is really exciting. Um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I think the first one was okay, right? Should we that try? That one won't fill our tests. Yeah. The first okay. one's okay, yeah. Well, the third one. I think it was the second one that was failing. That one. That one fails. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, let me try the second one again just to make sure that I'm not remembering correctly. Oh, it fails too. These two are both failing. Um, yeah. This one's okay though. Um, <sighs> both are an existing, existing B tail dot pointer. Is that correct? The other one is the existing a tail. What's existing a tail that length? So we already know this point. This point is correct because we just asserted on it once. Like we do know that it's equal to existing a head plus existing a head length and size yeah. of t. And so if we do existing a tail pointer plus existing a tail length, which could be zero times size of t, it's got to be equal to existing. Is this should be b head though, shouldn't it? Should that not be B head? Maybe, yeah. I think sometimes no. it's B head and sometimes it's B tail. They shouldn't be, shouldn't they be like the same pointer though? This is this a pointer into our slice. So yeah. this means that, does this mean that our zero length slices are sometimes at the wrong pointer address? Shouldn't we always get the pointer, the start pointer right though? That, that, I was wondering if that's possible, like if you have a zero length slice, if then sometimes the pointer is just meaningless. Remember, we've seen that before yeah. when we did some allocation I think we stuff. Have seen that before. Yeah. It's, and that's just because the zig spec isn't as formal as it should be yet. And the compiler yeah. has these some, some edge cases like this where it does things that are valid, but then kind of screw up when you try and inspect like what the compiler is doing. Yeah. Um, and so it's hard to say like what's the correct behavior or not. What's, what's the yeah. correct preview who is or not yet? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it should still, even if we're taking a zero length slice, it should still set the yeah, pointer. It, it like shouldn't. To what, yeah. yeah. I agree. And so we might be able to fix that by, well, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm betting that's what it is, though. Um, we just drop these asserts. 
I don't. I think we should try and just then confirm that that is the case. I was also wondering. Okay. Yeah, right. Up, Make sure the certs up, up. are doing the correct thing. Yeah. Shall we? Tail, Isaac, pointer can, plus tail can length we, equals b head. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. We can print out those pointers, and I was also wondering up top there uh, where we take the actual slices. It's very nice how you did the a tail using a double slice. Yeah. And I'm wondering if we can't do B tail in the same way. Or is that, have we got Not it? Not really, right? no. Because counts is a, that's a, that would be the mistake we did up here that we just fixed with counts. It's, to, okay. it's, a, it's an index, or it's a, that's from index zero, not from the start, from this start index. Okay. So. Could yeah, be the double slice that's messing, up, that's messing up the assertion there. I don't know. Um, actually, that's the one assert that passes this, so probably not. Um, yeah. Can we make that double slice more symmetrical with how we do the B tail calculation? Let's try and make it the same thing. Or the, um, we can, I mean, we can get rid of the double slice pretty easily by just adding um, a existing head dot length here. Yeah. Just do that. <laughs> and I was also wondering where we do the no, saturating we've got index out of bounds now. Interesting. Yeah. Where where we do the Why saturating? Why that break things? Yeah. Where we do the saturating subtraction from a yeah. half? Do we need to do it for a existing a like head length? Because can a existing head length yep. ever be greater than half? Um, it can't. Um, I think this is not where our problem is because that, that just, that I just fixed the bug. I, I made a bug by doing that transformation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, need, I need parentheses here to make this sure the saturating still works properly. Otherwise, it wouldn't wrap properly at zero. And then you get yeah. it out of bounds. But now it does do that properly. Okay. And now we're back to the same feeling as sure as before. Okay. A tail pointer plus A tail equals B head pointer. And what is B head pointer defined as? B head, existing B head pointer is existing A head length. So it should be starting at the same pointer as this one. And it should be the case in where this is zero. Where this is zero then, um, and which would be then where existing a head length um, plus elements length is then going to be greater than or equal to a half, where then you'll get a zero length slice. I'm not totally happy with how we do this here. I think yeah. it's. I think the double slice was better. So, uh, oh yeah, that for sure. Um, yeah. But even then, I'm not totally happy still. Yeah. It seems like this is the case where using saturated arithmetic is like quite a big hammer, where we actually do want the checked arithmetic more, like. Satur yeah. Saturating arithmetic is nice for where you've got counters and things um, that just go up and stop or go down and stop. Yeah. But, but for calculating bounds, it seems like we've done if we, and unless it really makes sense, you know. I mean, it always depends, right? But I feel like it's not, I'm not totally convinced this is correct still, even though the tests are passing. Um, yeah, me too. I 
in the case where a existing ATL exists, this is right. And so if if these things are greater than or equal to half, it is is it exactly true? Is 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 the is this exact is this expression zero exactly when we don't want we want existing tail length to be zero? It's when existing head length plus elements length is greater than or equal to a half. When is a tail zero? Um, yeah, that, that's exactly true. Um, that, that is right. Yeah, yeah. this is correct. I, I'm yeah. pretty confident about this. This one. So, so it's when. Yeah. When head plus elements length. It's greater is, than or equal to half. Then we want a zero length slice. And so that means is, when head is less less plus than elements length of these two yeah. things. If it's less than or equal, if it's less than half, then we then we get a then we get a um, uh, what's this thing yeah. called? Tail. Existing a tail. Then we get the a tail. Mm. Um, if they're equal to or greater than in this case, because elements, then we don't get an existing a tail and zero length. And yeah, I guess uh, we set the Isaac, pointer. I think I think I've got it. Um, we we're we're saying head plus elements is less than half, but it's possible for, I'm just, I, I, I had it like, um... it just slipped my mind now. Uh... I still think this is correct. I think we've got to do um, relative index uh, plus it's relative index plus um, elements length is less than half. Um, it is defined based on relative index though. Yeah. Existing a head length. The minimum of relative index in half. And so. Okay. Yeah, I'm also with you. So, if if a head if head length is up to half then head length plus elements length is going to be greater than half, so there's no tail. So that's fine. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this is more... right. I'm out, like, kind of want to write with only one saturating thing. These mm. things could be just like a plus. Yeah. Just slightly nicer, I feel like. I'm not mm. sure. <laughs> Can we use relative index here instead? Um, so this uh, is going to be a half. Just, uh, would that even be cleaner? I'm not sure. Um, it's, this, it's the stricter form. Yeah. Um, This pointer it's is quite already a, like, yeah. It's quite an interesting conundrum, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I probably I think it's like this is already correct. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know why they just start failing. It's a different assert that's failing. It's asserting on this pointer, and b head dot pointer. We should just print these off. Why haven't we done that yet? Um, no. <laughs> Um...
need for pointers. I guess I just print the pointer to int. That will work fine. Um, B head. Okay. Did I forget something? What did I do? Yeah. So I think I found why the second assertion fails. Yeah. Uh, so if we go back to the code there. I mean, an equal? What's going on here? Why is an A tail? Oh. It's when ATL can... is not. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. So the I see problem it's is. Do you see it too? Where, yeah, where yeah. In, the, in the second one, where there's no A tail, then where there's no A tail, then um, B head's pointer is actually calculated using elements length. Um, Be because that's not elements. What I'm seeing. Because what we're seeing is that the pointers are actually the same, but the problem They're is the that same. there is an A tail, and so the length it makes them, them not it makes this thing wrong then, because the uh, length ends yeah. up being zero. Yeah. So really, I think what we should be asserting is like the, yeah. And so this is when we have an A tail, but we don't have a B head. Yeah. yeah. So if B head greater than zero. But then this yeah. this asserts just kind of like pointless then. Um, we should be asserting based on a head, not um, not a tail here. Yeah. That's what we should be doing. Now this will pass. Um, just call it. We this. just need to uh, the start of the assert. Yeah, we've got a a instead of e there. Existing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then for this one, we're now trying to start on B tail. Um, so let's debug this one the same way. Just print it off first of all. Um, and also print off the length, I think, because we might need that. Well, let's just try this first. We don't have to do necessary work. Yeah, see, the, the same again. It's just the length is messing it up. Yeah. Because those two are Point exclusive. Um, a, a tail and B yeah. head are exclusive. Now we're doing B head and B tail though. Well, it seems like they don't they be exclusive, but they're the same. Um, yeah, B, B head, head and B tail. Zero. Yeah, B head and B Eric. tail do, do need to we do need to go from B head to B tail. So that should be correct, right? Um, I think this is the case that's going on here. And um, we should put off B head. I'll put off the length as well, I guess. Um, is it not passing with that third one? Oh, hold up. I, I passed. I, I didn't print the right things. Um, let's fix this real quick. Um, this should be head, uh, and then we have B tail, B head, B tail. Let's print this now and see what's going on. They're not the same. It seems to be okay. off by one. Well, let's print off the length as well, just to make sure. Um, just curious about the lengths. Okay, let's just. Um, cool. Getting like figuring these asserts out is also good for our understanding, you know, just for assurance. 
For sure, yeah. Hmm. Okay, yeah. This is where B head length is zero, and the tail. Yeah, so when 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 B head length is zero, and we're not doing it right sometimes. Okay, so we're making some assumption here to calculate B head. We're saying existing head length to cursor relative index, and if it actually should be. Hmm. So we should look at the cases where B head is zero here. That's, for example, like this. So B, this is B head. Yeah. And this is B tail. This is just B tail. There's no B head in these cases. And so, yeah, I see what the problem is. Um, we only calculate the pointer for this correctly when it's non, not zero length. Um, I think our code's right. This is search just wrong. Um, it's fine to have the wrong pointer if it's not if it's the length is zero, right? Like we don't need to add special cases. Do we care that we the pointer is right when the length's non zero? Yeah, we should try and get it like exact. Hmm. It's because so we're using cursor relative we, index. We should, uh, yeah. Sorry? It's, it's because we're using cursor relative index there, right? It's because we're just basing it purely off of A head. Um, yeah. Because we're assuming, we, we just make the assumption, which is a totally valid assumption that if B head is non-zero, then A tail is zero length. Yeah. Which is a totally valid thing to assume. We even assert that. Yeah. Um, it's almost that simplifies like we, the code here a lot. Yeah, it so does. We could like, it, we could like add in um, A tail with almost, slice bounds, but it, yeah. it's just, it doesn't make sense to do. It seems like we could take a step back and change the control flow just a little bit so that we 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 explicitly have like a yeah, I don't know. Like like just to show It that seems like we could unify head, existing B head, head and existing B tail A tail, make it just one slice. Uh, okay, yeah. But their node address changes. Yeah, that's that's the tricky part. They have to go to, do, to a different node based on yeah other stuff. Is, but they are they essentially about the same data. Mm -hmm. I think it's better oh. like this probably. Yeah, are our slice pointers wrong? Can we can you explain how where we or how how they are wrong? Um, so mm -hmm. in the case of B head being zero length, um, it points to the wrong place. It just points. We just say, okay, so either, so we're, look, we're looking at like the first pointer and they say, okay, we got that one done. So the next one is either going to be B head in this case or A tail in this case. And so we just put it to the, to the next address in the source array. And then one of those will be zero length, one of them won't be. But they both okay. use the same source memory array. Um, okay, so there's, there's only like one place. They both come from the we... same place, right? Okay. They both come okay. from the same spot in the those elements. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like, you like overlapping. So um, can't can't we just um in, is that actually wrong in our slice or not really? It isn't wrong. We just maybe no, our nothing's wrong. wrong. It's just the assert faulty. Okay. Um, so okay, cool. So then we can just fix fix that. I I actually thought you were saying our slice pointer was wrong when the length is zero. I mean, it depends on how you define these things. Um, yeah. And so you could say that um, in this case, B tail should be like here in the space, but zero, but zero length. It should be a zero length slice between this one and the next one. It could, we could have like yeah. A head and then B, B tail should be a zero length thing there. But it doesn't actually matter because it's, it's zero length. It doesn't matter where it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see, I, I, I actually like the B head 
and a tail are mutually exclusive. Yes. So the assert was, a, we, we expect B head to start where A head finishes and we expect A tail to start where A head finishes. That's what we've got, right? We've got those two asserts already. Sorry, can you repeat that? Um, can, if we check out the source code, then we should already have the two asserts where A, A tail starts where A head finishes. I think we do have that assert. Um, so A, A tails, A, A tails pointer is where A head finishes. That's correct. And B head starts B where, head head where A head finishes. Is is also yeah. and then the third the third one we're saying is actually the third one is now failing and that we're saying that b tail is where where this should b. be well i can i can make a path if you like we can say if yeah. um um existing b head dot length here in zero then we're going to do this assert otherwise we'll assert with um a tail yeah Oops. Cool. Thanks. I just talking it through now. I, I understand it better. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Cool. That definitely helped us though. Yeah. Um, I think I was just trying to figure out if we could actually just make them have the same definition. Is this correct? Just is this the same as cursory relative index? We just like laboriously recalculated that. Uh, so I just kind of feel like these slices should be the same. Um, yeah. They seem very symmetrical, and so I'm gonna just I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. Um, okay. <laughs> Or some curious. It could just be totally misguided. I think it's misguided. Yeah. Um, Enix out of bounds. Um, well, where do, where what's going on there? Elements A. Yeah, that's just. I think that's just wrong. Well, no. <laughs> it's worth a try. See, <laughs> what what it what it really is is it's it's where. Cursor relative index is before a half, and yeah. cursor relative index plus elements length is also before a half. Uh, yeah. I think we should just leave it like this. It's correct. Um, it's passing all the yeah. tests. Yeah, and it does it does show that we saying Yeah. I think it's pretty readable, like if you reason about it. Um Yeah. Yeah. This this is this is not like a ugly thing to read. This is pretty clear we're doing we're saying like the length of the slice is a half minus the, the two things that can come before it, which are A and Elman's length. And so it's 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 very intuitive to me that this is the right correct length um when yeah. it exists. And then the Slightly unintuitive part is how we get a zero length slice when it doesn't exist, which is just um, what happens is we have a half here, um, or no, we have, yeah, it just kind of works out somehow. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's two cases. I think there's one case where we have um, this going all the way up to a half, existing a head. Um, that's like this special case at the end, mm. this one where like kind of A takes up the whole thing or this one too, um, mm. where then this other cases like this, where then the elements, do we handle this case correctly? Let's make sure we do this correctly. I'm not sure we do actually. This is, this is um, this when relative index is less is less than half. And so we start yeah. this at relative index. This thing ATL starts at relative index and then goes up to a half minus relative index minus elements length. Is that right? 
So we have half minus real. Yeah, that, that does end up. Uh, uh, that, that does yeah. actually add up exactly the half. Cool. Yeah. We could express. Length. Or no, it, it actually goes even 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 lower. This is right. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we could express that that second one in the code there, um, where we do the saturating subtraction. If we jump, if we can jump to that quick. Yeah. Oh, uh, we could express it as cursor relative index uh, in a second. Yeah, we could we could say a half Instead of minus cursor relative index plus elements length. It should be the same. Let's see if the tests agree with you. I think they do. Yep. Because they they were encoding it a little bit, too. a little bit um, without relying on the min op for existing a head. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit more concrete. We're, we're saying um, that if relative index plus elements length is before half. If there is some difference there, then that'll give us a yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. That's what, what that that's what was tripping me up all along. I I and each time then I would go and take a look at how we calculate a head. And figure out uh, okay no we're fine but then um yeah but there's yeah, no reason to actually do it like that you just do it like yeah. that yeah. yeah the saturate i think actually does work pretty nicely here it definitely it prevents us from having to have an if statement i think there's another way to do it without an if statement exactly so, yeah like this. yeah so we, yeah we're saying if 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 that is less than half then take it uh, yeah take the difference yeah, I don't know. Is there another way where we could do use? Uh, John, I'm just curious now. Like, with if we could, we couldn't use like a min statement here, right? It's just going to be um, convoluted. Yeah, we could use you min can... with zero. But that's the same as saturating. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. Yeah, cool. It would be like min. Um, yeah, it'd be a little uh, more uh, awkward. This, it'd be more verbose is, and more awkward. I, I'm convinced this is perfect. Oh, we've got it's it. still 123 yeah. columns though, so we should probably do something about that. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, what do we want to do about that? Or, hmm, I'm not sure. Hmm. We could just wrap it, run zig format, and wrap squint it, our yeah. eyes. Yeah. yeah, I got started. Yeah. I started thinking about other things too, like, yeah. but I didn't find a way to simplify anything else. I think just yeah. wrapping it's probably the best. Um, yeah, and then we should take yeah. a lunch break, maybe. What do you think? Sure. Any, any like mon any like minor cleanup we need to do? I think this is all just passing now, and I can yeah. do, disable the debug prints now. I think they're already disabled. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, come back and start and remove. <laughs> yeah, when we when we come back, shall we just skim from top to bottom just to check if there's any polish or anything? Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, Maybe we can find we can probably find some more asserts. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. That, that would, that would um, be great. When do you want to come back then? Uh, shall we do on the hour? So it'll be like forty Sounds minutes. Sounds good break. to me. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Catch you. you catch you just now.
Hey Isaac, are we back? Hey, ready to go? Yep, yeah, great, ready, good break. Cool. All right, so I guess the first thing we want to do is just read through our implementation again. Yeah. Um, I'm on the wrong window. And we also need to get rid of insert elements old. Oh, and we also want to implement this one in terms of, or insert element in terms of this, perhaps. I don't know. Or we could just leave it. I mean, it already works. Yeah. Just need. Um, could you bring up your screen share? Yep. <laughs> <It's okay>. Cool. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> there we are. Okay. Um. So we've got insert elements, which uses insert elements batch now. And also, can we make sure we test something beyond the node size? I don't know if we do. Do we? I assume we. Do we? Have, do we ever insert elements beyond the node size? No. How many elements <coughs> insert? I don't think we test. We sh yeah, we should go beyond it now. We Great. definitely definitely need to. You need to test beyond it. Yeah. Yeah, but right right now we insert maximum node capacity. Yeah. Um, just make that node capacity times two or something. Yeah. Or times three. Maybe I was thinking times three. Times two because they'll run into edge cases. Yeah. Um, I think time three should, should do it. And then we just need to check um, that because we've got element count max. Uh, count isn't limited yet. When, when we remove, I think we might try to remove more elements than, than they are. Can that be? The, oh, we take the, um, min, take the minimum, yeah. Minimum with reference length, right? Yeah, okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm getting just a little You're bit of max feed, feedback. All right. Yeah. And here we take the maximum with or the minimum with um, count free. Yeah. Perfect. That should also be fine. Yeah. Perfect. And then we we take a random on that. So we run this then and make sure it actually works. Yeah. Um, now look at that. <laughs> oh. It's just this buffer or yeah, this needs to be time of three. Okay. So count less than <coughs> capacity and remove. Uh, remove still already. Get yeah. up for remove yet. Yeah, that's why. Or actually, I think that's that's just a faulty assert. Um, and we were being overly strict here because we planned on doing that API differently. Yeah. Great. Nice. Cool. So I guess the next thing to do is start reading through our code and see if we can factor anything out nicely or yeah. otherwise improve things. Actually, not that much code. Like we made this, this ended up getting pretty concise because of the way we did it without yeah. the branches. Yeah. Um. It's pretty cool. And we kind of also do the, the split node stuff. We kind of do it all in line here because we have to do so to do it like that to prevent copies. Yeah. Or prevent needless copies. Yep. Um. You know, I think we probably should implement. Um. the insert of a single element in terms of this because this is more efficient actually for inserting one element than our current implementation of the of inserting a single element because our current implementation does one copy in the split node function yeah if it needs to that does a single a copy there and then also does another copy to, to insert the thing yeah if it does it it does an unnecessary copy there in yeah. the case where it needs to split the node yeah you mean in um, <clears throat> insert elements batch? 
in our special branch. Yeah, in, in our insert one element, or just the, our insert single element function, we do an unnecessary copy. Oh, uh, okay. In here. Yeah. In the old version. Yeah. And so, I've we'll, been... we're going to do one copy in here to copy half the elements to the new node. Then we're going to do another copy here, which will also potentially copy half the elements. Yeah. Um, where that's not necessary. Yeah. Instead, we could just do single copy of each element as we do in our new version. Yeah. I think we. I've been kind of wondering what do we do with this old code now? Do we keep it around for reference? But if we've got it committed, then we can go and find it. So I don't think we should exactly. leave it, leave it around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I kind of am in favor of just deleting it. Yeah. yeah. We've got a solid fuzz test. Um, we can implement this in terms of our new code. Yeah. Do we even need it right now, to be honest? Like, do we even need insert single element? Or should we just... Are we always, always going to insert patches? Um, um, yeah, I think always insert patches. Well, so much to start deleting stuff then. Yeah. Um, this one too. Um, split node at full, split node as well. Do we not use that, Isaac, at all? Uh, no. We just use insert, insert empty node. This is the one we do. We still use. Okay. We just insert empty node and then go run, run with it. Yeah. We do our check if it's full here, and then if it's if it's not full, then we just do the very we just <coughs> do this very simple path. Okay. If it is. If there's not enough space for both of them, then we do our we just split the node, or create an empty node, and then create our six slices and put yeah. the stuff in the right places. Um, yeah, just one copy. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's. It, I'm really happy how this turned out. There's no yeah. branching except in our asserts. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you know, like these pointer asserts, uh, I think we're g going over 100 columns here. Oh yeah, we really are. It's 120. <laughs> 125. Yeah. Um, let's see, how do we best clean this up? I feel like I kind of wanted to make a helper. That's why I just kind of left them really long to, to uh... Sorry, man. I'm seeing you all day. Oh, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt was just opening the door saying he's stealing the aircon uh, coming from where I'm at. So, yeah. <laughs> There's all, uh, cool. it's, it's Adrian, Don, Matt, Karen. All day. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Pointer to, yeah, so we could have like some kind of helper that did this check for us. Um, but maybe that's maybe this abstraction. Let's just get super verbose with these. You know, and this also will be cleaned up by a future because it's an exception <coughs> to proposal to allow like pointer or math. Do we already allow pointer addition on multi pointers? I think we do actually. Um, so you're probably. Does this work? So here's I asking a. So we don't allow subtraction yet, but I think we allow addition. Um, or not. Oh, I need to add length. Use length. He does it does want expect to use size though. So that that, that does work. Yeah, nice. cool. Yeah. We don't allow subtraction yet though, but that's that's better than it was already. So I'll do that with the other ones too. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know we don't need the pointer to ints anymore now, over there. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is going to definitely going to be cleaner. Yeah. Because now they're both just just two pointers that we're comparing. Then. Yeah. This is just better. This will give you a pointer again. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at that. Not too bad. No. Great. We can do the same there. Um, yep. Plus that equals. Nice. Hopefully that's still compiled. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Great. Look at that. Perfect. Cool. And line 249, where we do copy backwards, are we within the column? Uh, we're not. Oh, just barely 103. 
Okay. Um, so, yeah. Maybe trailing. I should put this one on two lines, probably then. Yeah, trailing comma, close our eyes, and they we good. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and line 245 upstairs, that looks fine, the length there. Yep, that's 94. Okay. I should add my thing back. I used to have like a HL um, global column uh, 100 red. Uh, I forget the syntax here. I should bring that back. I used to have one of those. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of find. Kind of like find it slightly distracting too. Just make it like in a in a in a kind of a slightly off background color. It's not too bright. Yeah. 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 Anyhow. Cool. So and that that one two two nine. That's fine. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. These are ninety nine. Yeah. Do you think we can group those two? Um, those four asserts, do they make sense to, they, they do, right, to go together, no new line between them? Yeah, they do. Mm. This one could also like come down with these ones, because these are all pointer asserts. Yeah. These are like the got kind of three kinds, these are like the, the count asserts. Yeah. These are the uh, yeah. exclusive one thing slash the other thing asserts, and then these are the pointer asserts. Yeah. And then... Yeah. We also want to switch this to div seal. Yeah, uh, that would be great. Um, yeah. So, do we have extensions? We no, no, we don't have extensions yet. Let's let's do it. It's called util. Yeah. Uh, that's what it is. <clears throat> oh, I think we were still going to rename it. We do have utils already in here. We're still planning a. We wanted to rename it, but in a separate commit, right? Yeah. And I'm wondering if we want to yeah. call it div seal or if we want to call it div seal u or something because I, actually it only works for un, unsigned integers. Um, it's a compile error if it's not, if it doesn't work there, right? Okay. Yeah, we just, I mean, it'll just give us a compile error for passing signed integers, so yeah. maybe it's fine. I think until we have a, another version, if until until we have like a case where we need it for signing integers, we should just leave it like this probably. Yeah. Or do then also at that point just make it work for signing integers too, and like make the return type based on the inputs. You can get pretty fancy there with these type system. Uh, of course, like we do, we do a comp time function for the return type. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, they yeah. either return an error or not based on whether they, um, yeah, whether the inputs are. Positive or not? Okay, or perf perfect. Not positive, whether the types of the input are unsigned yeah. or signed. Yeah. Yeah. Numerator denominator. So we're just doing um, total two. That's gonna be a half now, and then b half is just gonna be. Should we do it like this? Like div floor and div seal, or should we do b half in terms of a half in total? Yeah, we should bind. the The second approach is better because they bound. Um, they <clears throat> yeah, you can you see bind them with the code of the asserts. Like it's better to do it in the code if you can. Yeah, conveniently. Yeah, um, that's that's better. We also assert the total. I guess we. It's kind of weird that total equals a half plus b half. We do that further down. Okay. But it's not a we bad. Do it um, up there too, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't mind like just to have an extra one there. Make it nice and clear. Yeah. A pointer, B pointer. All right, we're gonna do some of these. We wanted to copy our our diagrams into the code. Yeah. Well, what we, what should we, we start at the top of this function? Uh, and what, and what make we, sure we've covered everything up to this point before. Yeah. What do you want to say? Uh, I was going to say we could do um, those asserts. We could say um, we could move the total one down. And then there, there we can actually change it and say a half plus b half equals total. So that we 
just keep it in terms of a half on the left and then maybe that should be okay. the the second assert um, after okay. yeah like that yeah yeah that's Good. great yeah, yeah and we can group those with the calculations if you like straight up yeah I thought we want to make sure we don't skip over this stuff. Yeah, that, that to do we can now drop because we no longer have a um, restriction on growth factor and node capacity. Indeed. Because now we just, this is just an internal helper. Yeah. Um, Which is quite nice now, like that. Or, yeah, this, th th that was a really good idea of yours that we could just, a realization that we could do it like this. Yeah. Um, I think we can drop that comment above insert elements badge because it's a private function and yeah, we've we can. got the assertion inside. And we got to assert right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does this fit on one line? I think it probably doesn't. So index equals zero. We also only do one cursor for absolute index call now, which that's also more efficient than it was before. Yeah. Yeah. Before we do two of those, and those that's actually go like O N. Those we yeah. do right from the start. And it's O N times uh, O N also, because we've got the outer loop. O N times two indeed, yeah. times the N of the outer yeah. ins, number of incidents. I think I think I did notice it running faster with this version. Like just oh, subjectively, okay. the test case seemed to finish instantly. Yeah. I didn't really think about it much, but now I'm thinking about it. Like, yeah, there's there's reason for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's yeah, a reason that, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I, I also it did it did feel faster. I didn't click, but. Yeah, yeah it just kind of clicked for me just now, but because like it, it wasn't instant yesterday when we finished the test. It was cause I took like three seconds or something. Yeah. But now it's instant again. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's very nice. Uh, I like it because, it, except for this little special case, we've got just single code path for yeah. putting. Yeah, and this system. is this is also makes yeah. This I think this this is also good to have in the special case because this is then. I think trying to incorporate this into the other rest would make it even more complex, which yeah. would then, kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. If we move the case here, does it work? Probably not. Um, I'm kind of curious to try though. Like yeah, just yeah. if we just delete this if statement, do it, does it? Does everything just work? Like I wouldn't be totally surprised if it did, but I think also think it probably won't. Yeah. Um. It does. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was. Delete it then. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was hoping for yesterday. You know that we, it just works. Um, Look at that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Shall we just um, check? Do you want to like check it over first? Check that we um, understand we it. how it works. Yeah. How it works. We have all the certs that like backing us up. Oh, yeah. look at this. We are messing up though. We are it's turning an empty node. That's not good. Okay. Ah, uh, you know what we need to do in our verify? We need to introspect our segmented array and check that all our nodes are at least half full, except for the last one. Yeah, let's do that, and then break this again, and then check that that catches it. Yeah. Because um, that's actually something so, that we really expect from this API. You know, like yeah, yeah, it's we require that. Critical um, guarantee. Should we do it at the end? <laughs> yeah, I? yeah, I think so. Because the... the what are we doing we, here? Like the, oh, this is... Uh, like, now we're going to do another one. Um, yeah. So now we're actually gonna we're just gonna iterate manually over the nodes. I think is what we're gonna do. Yeah. So for um, array dot context dot uh, array um, nodes. 
or it's just no, it's called nodes, isn't it? It's yeah. just a chronic nodes that counts. Um, zero up to. Oh, uh, we want to use nodes. I think counts. We don't actually only care about the counts, though. Um, oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, because that tells us what's in the node. Yeah. The node, the node itself can't. Yeah. Yeah, except for the last ones. Actually, we want we want to only go up from count minus one. We don't need to check this for the last one. Yeah. Expect um, that count. I, th I think we should rather do it by capturing i because that one can otherwise be underflow if the array is empty. Oh yes. Or you do saturating. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Is that too tricky? Or do you like it? Um, that's um, fine. Yeah. Cool. I I'm, I don't know, I kind of started wanting to use it everywhere since I was since this one place I use it here. Yeah. It ended up being really nice. Yeah. Um. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing it now. Like it's like I think that's how it is when you like learn language features and you start seeing places you can use it. Yeah. And. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, we want to expect the count is less than, or is greater than or equal to half. Yeah. Well, this is um, exactly node capacity divide floor division with two. Is that correct? Yeah, we should do div exact node capacity in two, because we ex expect expect that. Cool. Yeah, we do assert that. Yeah, and then that we just need to replace the dip the slash with a comma. <coughs> Indeed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Array that new capacity that passes. All right, let's go break that thing again. You can also yeah. get rid of this for all this these breaks because we don't actually need any context variable. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Elements. That's kind of cool that it worked, even though it did the wrong thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold up, I'm in the wrong spot. Insert empty node at. Here we are. Yes, this one. You can also do and false in the condition. Then you don't need to do all the lines. Sure. Look at that. Yeah. Very nice. That's another thing our test wasn't checking, but now it does check. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> and then, so, maybe what we can do is still reuse the code path, but we can't unless we have two nodes. No, we really can't unless we have two nodes. And so, I think it's, I think whatever we do is gonna be more complex than what we have here. Yeah. Um, we could like this is all, this, yeah. We could see afterwards, at the end of the insert, do we still have an empty node? Then remove it. I don't like it. I mean, it's still more code that's running. Like I think just having this branch is simpler. Yeah. I also, like do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, also because if we do the single code path, we will temporarily go over our static allocation. So exactly, yeah. yeah. There's there's just so many other there's much more dimensionality like that. Yeah. We should only create a node if we know we're gonna use it. Yeah. This does what we want it to do, right? Um this increases our node count, grabs us a node, sets counts to zero. That's indexes properly. Okay. Is it, that's a fine way to do it. Is this the only place we call it? 
there's only one other place. There's two places here. Or, no, there's just one place, apparently. Just one, yeah. This here is it. Why don't we use it here? I can't remember. It's heard that <laughs> air crown is greater than zero. Why do we need that, though? Try to uh, simplify this stuff. Because you see that the node index um, doesn't mean anything if we've got no nodes. I oh, think that, yeah. that's, okay. that's why. Well, we could do the same thing, the same thing as we have for our insert functions and allow it to insert one past the end. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Right now it actually inserts like one thing after no, doesn't it? Uh, it puts it at node, and then everything after that gets shifted. Don't we allow um, doing already? Don't we already allow inserting one past the end? Then I think we must. Otherwise, we can never add nodes to the end. We can never split the last node if we don't allow that. So I think we must yeah. allow that already. Yeah. Um, so why are we inserting this? What breaks so, the node is equal to zero? It would be great guess, if we... Oh, if, there's this, there's yeah, this that, yeah. that, that breaks the node is equal to zero. Yeah. So maybe what we should just do, do is... But that is, be an if statement. We should use an if expression here and then unify the two so we have a single code path. That's much better. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. If node equals zero, zero, else. That wasn't too hard. No. Um, yeah. And then, you don't, this assert's gone. Yeah. This assert's gone. That's less than or equal to node, right? That node count. The first node can only, no, this comma's gone. Um, we can insert a node count. This is this is saying that we can't insert one past the end, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And so if node count is zero and node is zero, that's valid. Mm. Um, that's fine. But we, then we just skip this case. We don't do any copies if node is, is equal to the rate at node count. Yeah. So this code all works fine. I'm not sure why we did it like this, to be honest. Yeah, um, we should, um, maybe we should group that assert with the following if condition. Um, oh yeah, that's a good idea. They go nicely together. We do that a couple other places, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Insert empty node at. Now this just becomes, yeah. Um, array. Insert empty node at. Um, node pool zero. Yeah. Then we can assert these things if we like. Yeah. Um, we can really assert, we assert that the node is not equal to null. Yeah. Great. Uh, asserts are my favorite kind of programming now. Like more, more <laughs> than. Yeah. Um, and last one is here. There, I think also like asserts are the best way to make software secure. Like if you've got to defend against hackers, the uh, asserts are the like def definitely by far the, the most scary thing. Because it just means that you never uh, give them anything they can chain. Like they can find one function where there's a little bit of a gap, um, but all the yeah. other functions are gonna detect it. So they can maybe, they just can't put stuff together get through it's the same yeah. so that, that uh, it's like two sides of the same coin you know you get safety or you get security depending what you what you want um, and a lot of like the exploits that happen with file formats are because the current decoders or the codex they were just written in a time when there was Postel's law so they try to be um, 
try to be um, flexible in what they accept, very tolerant in what they accept, and very conservative in what they send. But actually, you need to be conservative on both sides. Um, just be strict. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Just, just being strict is kind of the way to go to making software reliable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is like somewhat counterintuitive to some people, I think, because they think like being strict will cause like valid things to get thrown away sometimes or something. But really, yeah. those aren't valid things if they're not getting through the code. Yeah. Or there's a bug in your code that needs to be fixed. Well, it's one of those two things. And the, um, the strictness so. tells tells you helps you find it faster. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually just got um, a bug report on my Wayland compositor because one of my assertions triggered, and so now I found an interesting case I didn't think of, and so hey, I'm yeah, going awesome. to fix that now. Uh, high five, um, I think. Congrats. Yeah, That's, deeper yeah. assertion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Very cool. I thought you were going to say you got a bug report that was like a, a vulnerability, you know, but now you actually got an assertion failure. I know. So, yeah. I got an assertion failure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. We didn't actually make the code shorter, but now it's like much much better because yeah. it uses the same code path and just as asserts to check it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, yep. Guess we should test it again. Cool. Nice. All right. Our special branch. Can we take a look at that? Uh, what happens if we remove the return there? Like if we fall through by accident? Can we just try run then the test? We ins I think we, I don't think we fail. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We probably fail. Or maybe we don't. I think we don't probably. I think we just kind of insert extra nodes. Well, we're going to make we're mess up that assert though. Yeah. So we'll have too many nodes. It's going to fail. Yeah. I think we just get an assertion failure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, because we've changed counts, yeah, because we changed, we modify counts here, so then yeah. we get the assertion failure, so with our asserts down below. Yeah. And if we, even if we didn't have those asserts, I'm sure we got, we'd fail the test too. Um, yeah. So we would have messed up the half of these nodes. We'd have nodes that are less than half full then. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the like the, the line spacing in here? It's just kind of like all compact right now. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm happy. Uh, I'm kind of fine with that. Yeah. yeah. What do you want to do? You could, could also do it like this. Yeah, I think that's also good. Uh, maybe maybe compact is fine then. Actually. Yeah, I don't I, I don't really mind it. Yeah. It's kind of a simple branch compared to what comes after. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is this is like a really nice dense block of text. It just kind of fills up the whole hundred columns all the way down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's su super dense. Like it's it's kind I of. I don't know if I've had code that dense before. Yeah. Um, like you know. That's full pretty crazy. Full Spectre, the Wall of Sound. He, he, like his music Sorry? production. He, do you have you heard of the oh, wall, yeah. of, wall of Sound? Like Phil Spector's music yeah, yeah. production style. You know, this is like Wall of Code. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's a, lot of, a lot of it's asserts. Yeah. Just the yeah the bulk of it's really assert. Like this whole this whole block here is just asserts. Yeah. And this part alone isn't like too bad. It's only like six actual lines. Two yeah. of which are split. I mean, yeah. the actual code here is just six lines. There's six, this is Heimlund's five copies and some yeah. metadata. It's really actually pretty simple, like what yeah. the computer actually has to do. Yeah. But this is all for us, so we don't screw up and so we don't screw things up. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how this turned out, though. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Anyhow, what do you want to read through this again, or I think I think we're not really going to gain anything more by reading through this stuff again right now. We've already like gone over it backwards and forwards today. Yeah. Maybe if we come back in a few days, we'll think of something. We'll have like a new perspective. But right now, That's, I'm just going to say the same things I've said already. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm hundred percent with you on that. What what we could just do is add our um, notation. Just capture oh, the flesh out these things. Yeah. 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 Okay. I guess I can uh, bring back our uh, the um, diagrams then. Yeah. So I think the first I want, first I want to go for like these three, the three core ones, and then we'll add the special cases. Does that sound good? Yeah. So, yeah. What do we? How do we do this? We want. We want to end up with this one we have right here is actually already this is the middle one right now. Can you save uh, that? I would even just say um, just treat it as like a sliding ruler and we just show five cases, one, two, three, four, five, like we've got the, with the, the one yeah, yeah. stream and then going all the way to the other. Uh, yeah, the extremes are pretty easy though, so I was gonna do this part first, because it's uh, a little trickier okay. to figure out. Uh, okay, um, cool. cool. That's all I was really saying. Okay, sorry. Um, no worries. Hey, Diana so made a... One next to the beginning. Uh, we've, we've um, Diana made us here. I don't know if, if he's still there. Yes, Zig does have a minimum. Um, yeah. It's pretty new. It was yeah. added to work with SIMD vectors, but it actually works for scalars too. So we can just kind of, we just kind of started using it. Um, I think it was added in 0 0.9. Yeah. And so I've seen that Andrew started using it in some of his new code. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's kind of nice. It's in the language now, so you might as well use it. Yeah. Uh, Method min doesn't work on vectors, I think. I don't remember the details, but there was a, there was good reason to use it, to add yeah. it. Yeah, it's because math.min is runtime, I think, and uh, vectors are, they need a built-in because they lower to the different SIMD intrinsics, depending on what what are available. Yeah, Excalidraw is awesome. Thanks for the recommendation. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, Anyhow, sa it we're saved not, us we're today. We're not transferring hey? our Excalidraw. Hmm? Excalidraw really saved us today. Like it, it was a big part of the solution. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, We've got, yeah. We just real quickly show show you how, what we ended up with. We have this really nice block of text now, which is just all the asserts and math we need to do to make this work. But there's only one branch now. We only have. This is this is still for insertion, but yeah. Yeah. Anyhow. Back to adding our diagrams. Oops. And that that That's code it, that code is handling all these um, cases where you're inserting elements across nodes or in one of the nodes or in the other one. Yeah, it's where it's where we we insert elements to a node that's full, and we need to then split the node and distribute the elements that are being inserted and the elements that already exist in the node being split across the two nodes, yeah. such that new elements are in the right place in the array and that the both nodes have the equal amount an equal amount of elements are only off by one so purple are existing elements red are the new ones being inserted uh other way around uh, 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 uh i i got a drum i got a drum yeah uh yeah. the other way around cool. and so this is at the state after insertion um yeah could be expect to arrive at. You can see some before and afters here. Um, I guess here is like before insertion. We have something like this, and then we divide this purple up into these three blocks, and they end up here, here, and here. The red, the red there. Yeah. Uh, these are like the five cases where you and I want to document on how stuff will end up. And just keep this in our Git history so we can refer back to it without having to use Excalibur Draw. You never know yeah. what will happen with these websites. They may just like disappear. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Isaac, could you send me a screenshot of what we've got on Excalidraw there, like that final... Have we not uh, already done so? Uh, no. We, we didn't we... have the final state, so this whole thing is pretty nice. If, if you can... Just go for everything here? Yeah, that's it. Great. All right. Um... 
cool. There, awesome. nice. Share awesome. button sounds cool as well. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be very cool. Yeah, so you can insert multiple elements as a batch. So the idea is when we do compaction, we're going to read in one table at level A, then we'll read in up to 10 tables at the lower level B. Um, so we've got 11 tables read in. Then we're going to write out up to 11 tables in level B, and we're going to remove the input tables, and we're going to create the output tables. So we, we'll end up taking, we'll, we'll remove, we'll do a remove against the segmented array of a, of a batch of 11 elements, and we'll do an insert against the segmented array of a batch of 11 elements. So that's the whole idea behind these batch, um, batch functions. That's right. I've got how many x's? One, two, three, four, five x's, and two y's. So seven total, so we'll have four and three. So that's right. Cool. Yeah. I made the nodes six. Okay. Nodes size six. Nice. Um. So this is the first case, or this is this case here. Um. This is then before and after. We insert two two y's in that. Before we have this node, then we create this new node. We yeah. probably delete the new node. I don't think this is very necessary. That kind of actually complicates things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, cool. That that first one, the relative index there is actually one, uh, not two. Yep. I just got to fix that. Cool. Catch. You can insert an, any arbitrary number of elements at once. Um, inside this function, we limit it to the number of elements in the fit inside one node for simplicity. But in the, the public API, we would just then do like a loop of inserts at that node size, like this. We just we limit the batch size to the node capacity, essentially. Um, and the node capacity is quite large in our in our use case, so yeah. that's not really a limit in practice. Yeah. But we do support. We don't have to worry about any kind of edge cases in this with this code. But usually, we'll just do one batch insert with all the elements we want to insert. Yeah, and the big reason is because we might only be inserting 10 tables, but the node can be like 64 kilobytes, so it holds a thousand tables. So if we didn't have a batch insert, we would insert one table and potentially we're inserting at the beginning. Now we've got to copy all other thousand tables to the right. Then we insert the next table, then we copy again, copy again, copy again. So now we don't have that. Yeah that um, mem copy overhead. So basically it, it, it saves us like a meg of memory bandwidth which could thrash the CPU cache. Like it would clear out the um, L1, L2 buffers. I think I'm going to insert one Y this time. Okay, then that doesn't work out. I'm going to make this one full. Let's insert two Ys maybe. Yeah. That work out then? Yeah, that will work out. Then we'll have to take this. Cool. And their relative index is um, uh, four. Zero, or one, five. Three, it's five, five, right? Five. Yeah. 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 So that covers the, the cases where you have Y split, um, X's split, or the, the X tail split, and the X head split. Okay. Yeah. But those are these three cases in the middle here now. Um, these three. Now we should, I'm going to add the two for the start and the end. Nice. So. All right. So this could be these are kind of like weird edge cases. This is where we have like my um, node size is six. So let's see, we've got like five X's here, yeah, that works. And then we insert um, six Y's. One, two, three, four, five, six. Relative index of zero. And we end up with here, and like that. Yeah. And maybe we could make it a bit more tricky, make it like three Y's that we're inserting, and we've got three X's. 
Uh, no, it would, that wouldn't be tricky. Uh, uh, and this, this is just not. This is a special case of this case, so it's not going to yeah. be tricky. Uh, yeah. What we could do this is, is a tricky version. Okay. Uh, and what we could show, like how div seal works here. It, it, we are, aren't we? Because we have here um, six and five. So maybe. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, I missed that. Okay, yeah, great. Cool. Yeah, I've always been making it uneven just to make sure that it's clear that yeah. we do put the. Yeah. We do one where it's even. We do here. Okay, so we do have one where they, we have even numbers. Yeah. That's good. All right, I'll just do another one of these at the end then, I guess. Yeah. Actually, it, could be, it could be exactly the same, just a different relative index then. Yeah. Um, relative index of instead of zero. Um, well, it'd be six, wouldn't it? Or here, it would be five to insert. Yeah. So you have here one, two, three, four, five. And you hit up with x, 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 y. And then y, 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 y. Yeah. It, I think it'll actually work differently, won't it? Because we will see that the total is greater than node capacity. So we'll split it into halves or not. There, there is a case where you can do it that the existing elements are exactly a half and the new elements all end yeah. up in b half. If we swap it around here, if we just make it x, this this is how it would work, yeah. Okay. Is that a better example? Yeah, oh, that's cool. It, um, Uh, is there a way we can do it where we leave the node empty? Really, so, uh, which node empty? Uh, both nodes. Um, yes, if we leave off one x here and one y here. Yeah. So that then we'll, we'll have five plus five divided by two, five in each. And we're putting five that. Right, yeah, five still right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. There we go. And our nice. tests are already passing, so we're awesome. done with this then. Awesome, Isaac. There we go. Um. Note the first case can be seen. Um, is that useful? Yeah, it is. Maybe, maybe it might come across that it looks like it's a special case, but what, what we're maybe meaning to say is that the first and last cases are actually, they can be generalized. Is that the right way of saying it? Like the the, the middle three are actually yeah. the only ones we need. All, all others can be handled in terms of them. Um, yeah, special case of the second, that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, but may, I just thought maybe someone might think special case means we need special code. Uh, but actually what we're trying to say is the The middle three are the special cases that need to be handled. All the others are general. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's right how I'm saying it. I don't. it we could just say the first yeah, case can be seen as a these, as a case of the second. That, this, I'm pretty sure this is this is a fine way to say it. Yeah. You say that the first case is a, is a special case of this one. Yeah. It's it's a subset of this case. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, that's right then. And maybe we don't need to say note. Uh, we can just say the, the, um, the first case and use a colon to show that we covering the whole section. Okay. Yeah. And then wrap this. Yeah. I want to wrap it up slightly earlier. It's kind of subjective. I think just wrapping it like a little bit 
tighter, kind of something that makes it more readable instead of going all the way out to 100 on like single line stuff like this. Yeah. I think this is good though. Yeah. Um, you could you could wrong. even even wrap it and just say as two sentences. The first case can be seen as a special case of the second. The fifth case can be seen as a special case of the fourth. Uh, sure. Don't know if you like that. And then we've just got the two those um, on the second line there. That's it. And then there's a the as. Um, that's it. Cool. Now it lines up. <laughs> Must be right. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so there we go. We got our massively thick block of code here. Yep. Awesome. Got notation. And the rad method. Should it still pass here? Yep. That's passed. Looking good. Is there any other dead code we've now gotten rid of? Um, for dead code, insert elements. Oh, oh this one's yeah. gone. Yeah. And that we just got. This one's now just init and dnet. Yeah. Insert elements. Insert elements batch. This function is probably like over 70 lines. Yeah, it's like 130 lines. Yeah, but that's okay. We'll. It's never really a good place to split it. No. A lot of it's this comment too. Yeah. We can we make it. We split out some part of it for like this part. Yeah. Cool. Shall we do a commit now? Um, I think we should. Yeah, I think so too. You've done like one block of work. Yeah. be pretty interesting well, to we see. Have, because this WFP was us like starting to figure this out, right? Yeah. Um, I, um, this is just, yeah, this is us starting to figure out this stuff. Yeah. And so we should just amend that WFP and rename it. Yeah. Um, this is then LSM. Well, do we use LSM for this? We do. Okay. Um, optimize. Um, segmented array batch inserts. Yeah. Inserts. All right. Hey. How's it, Luis? <clears throat> really well. Um, we got just finished up our commit and yeah. implemented or optimized batch insert for a segmented array um, yeah. with a very nice block of comments and inserts. Here That's it is. Day. Look at that stuff. That's what we've done today, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> um, yeah. And drawn some nice diagrams. Yeah. I don't know. What, I wonder what people think when they see this. They must think, "Oh my, my hat! Like this is crazy. What is going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> and it is kind of insane, yeah. but it's also the kind of just what you have to do to do this. Um, yeah. And it is actually the simplest way to do it, I think, because there's no, there's no if statements. It's all just yeah. one case. Do you want to show how we take those slices and then? Uh... Yeah, I mean, we've kind of. Oh, you mean this part or what? Yeah, yeah. Or well, just below where we, I, I oh, we should actually yeah. show our nice Excali draw as well. Or diagrams. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We kind of broke up our nodes into different blocks. Yeah. Um. The red is the stuff being inserted, and the purple stuff is the stuff that's already in our segmented array. Yeah. And then we have basically a slice for each of the possible blocks here. So we've got like a slice for this block, a slice for this block, a slice for this one slice for this one and then we've actually kind of got two slices for each of these blocks because they might each of them might be split across the two arrays depending on how things work out and where we're inserting to and how much is in the array already and whatnot and so that all gets calculated here then we spend a lot of us sort of checking that it's all right and then we do just five copies with no branches and update some metadata and we're done yeah. 
Yeah, so safe, safety right. beetle and yeah. performance beetle, experience beetle, VSR beetle, they've all been taking turns like for Larissa's show uh, at the beginning. It's very cool. I did actually notice it uh, just the other day. I wanted to still drop you a note to say thanks. Because uh, they, yeah, they've just mentioned it to me and said they're having a lot of fun there. Uh, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it's, it's great. Yeah. I think we're done with this now. Yeah. And I've just done the commit. And now. What is the diff? Well, I should uh, probably go pretty soon. Yeah, what was what the lines of code uh, change, Isaac, uh, on the commit? Um, get diff. Or what was that? Something that's a short, short stat. Can you do that here? Yeah. Dead. Uh, 180 insertions, 82 deletions. Okay. That's not too bad. Yeah, Mo and most of it is assertions, maybe. Uh, yeah, well, I think a lot of it. Oh, and notation as well. Yeah. And the test, these test stuff too. We also add a bunch more tests for the testing the iterators. Make yeah. sure they they starting in the start node and whatnot. I could have actually been a different commit. I guess we could have. Uh, Oh, looks! I actually changed this by accident here. I should probably fix that. Yeah. Um, anything else to fix up here? We had some de more debug print stuff. Yeah. We had some noise that w it wasn't all just um, increased complexity. Yeah. Because I've got the feeling I think we actually ended up with less code in the end if we yeah. take out um, the test changes and the notation. We came in with less code to do more. Yeah, because we we've gotten a rid of split node and split node of full. Um, you take out the comments and test changes. I think it's like a roughly the same amount of code. It's yeah. not a big difference either way. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, definitely not a huge complexity increase. Um, well, it kind of is, but yeah. Yeah, short stats for nifty darn innovator. There's so many like little tiny things you can never you'll never find out about Git unless you like read the man page looking for an option yeah. um, and then remember it because it's just you can just it's impossible to know every option of git of every git command <laughs> so it was git show short stat well you can pass short stat to like lots of different stuff okay also also works you get it works on git diff as well that's okay. where i usually use it i didn't actually know you could pass it until the show i just kind of tried it and it worked so <laughs> um yeah nice. and that just shows you the Insertions and deletions. Yeah. And I'll show you for each file, I think, too. Mm. If you have multiple files that are affected. Anyhow. Yeah. Anything else we need to do? Oh, I need to fix that test case. We just messed up. Yeah. Five, one, two. Awesome. So it passes pretty yeah. fast. Yep. Cool. And um, I feel like not showing me. I guess I need a force push. Origin all some force force with please. Trying to get in the habit of only ever using this one because it's better. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. How does, oh, so basically that's going to do a compare and swap. It's going to check what's currently there and not, yeah. is that right? Uh, and so if you don't, it says if you don't have, if there are reps on the remote that you don't have locally, then it will, will refuse to force push essentially. Okay. So if, for example, DJ had pushed to the branch and I hadn't realized that yet, yeah. or hadn't pulled in its changes yet, it would then fail. Okay. But yeah. Nice. Instead of, yeah, I also don't want to just like rebind F to be this because then if I go in someone else's machine and I'll expect F to have this behavior. Yeah. But yeah, anyhow, yeah. just gotta get in the habit. Yeah, brilliant. I've learned two things, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? No, I, I'm, I'm enjoying learning this about Git. It's great, short stat and force with, force yeah, I mean, with It's lease. ridiculous that we need all this stuff. Um, um, yeah, fossil for the win. Git, you know? I almost used fossil cool. once. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Fossil, it doesn't really, it has still the same storage, like, it's not, if I, if, we, if I switched to anything, it'd probably be Darks, or like Pujol or something, which then has like, better patch theory, like patches can commute then, 
And yeah. so you don't even need to rebase. You can just edit yeah. the patch, yeah. and it doesn't. It's not destructive, or editing history isn't as destructive. Yeah. Um, that's like more of a different paradigm, though, and it's not. Yeah. yeah. Nobody uses it, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must for better or worse. Yeah, I must jump. Uh, uh, jump quick to another call. So I'll, yeah, it's been awesome, Isaac. Congrats. All right. Like. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cheers, cheers, everybody. Uh, Cheers, everybody. Hope you enjoyed and see you tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> yeah, great, great to see you all. Thanks. Yeah, yeah so um, today, how do we do this? 15. Now? Yeah, yeah. Session 15, right? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so, okay, let me sign us off. Yeah, Tiger Beetle sessions, uh, Tuesday, 1st of Feb, uh, session 15. Catch you tomorrow. Jack is very